Podcast Charge! Hello everyone and welcome to episode 127 of Lost in Translation. I'm May. And I'm Jack. And this time we watched How to Fix a Broken Digivice. Or Berserking Digivices, a new Brilliance. And Journey to the Sacred City. Or an imprisoned Misru, the Holy Kitty's Trape. Awesome. You're welcome. Or T Rap. Also T Rap. It's like a rap with a T Rex involved. A T Rex is rapping? That'd be cool, eh? For Digi News this week, first up we have some sad news. Digimon Heroes is closing down in de- in December, on December 30th. Yes! But not like you play that game anyway. Oh, look, honestly I haven't touched it for a couple of months, especially since Lynx came out. But I did spend money on this game like a year ago. But I feel like I got enough enjoyment that I'm not like too upset that I spent money on it. If I knew that it was if, if I knew that it had a death date, I wouldn't have spent money on it. But I feel like there's not too much regret because I did have like many, many, many hours like playing this game and it was a good game. And they've um they they made it possible to get all the Digimon between now and December thirtieth, so you can have a complete collection. And then the servers are down and you can't log in. Anymore. Yeah. What what I wish they would have done is if they could just maybe kill the servers and make it single player only, so you could only play like the single player missions. That sounds like it would cost them money for no reason. But no, they kill the servers. They don't. They don't have to upkeep it anymore. Yeah, but it would co- it would have development cost to make to redesign the game to be that way. They've made enough money. What do you no? But they make no additional yeah. money out of it, so why so bother? Bandai Namco says it's because they've got other things they want to spend time on. Which Bamco. I guess Which I guess you know, Digimon Links did just come out, and the writing was or, you know in the war water on the cards however that saying goes the writing on the wall there we are the water what and people always said you know it closed down fairly quickly in japan so i guess i should have assumed it had a death date like it's been dead in japan for like years and it was only up i think for a couple of years maybe and especially because digimon links is out now so it should have been obvious it was going to close down i kind of had a thought that it might but i hope not because even though i haven't touched it for months like it's still like it's still it's still a not terrible game and i'll probably jump on a few times because it's closing down and another bit of Digi News, the Dear Boromon Evolving Spirits and the Duke Mon Next Edge are now up for pre-order and I just pre-ordered them on Army Army. You mean the Dear Boromon, look at his hands! Yeah, we don't look at the hands. Look at his hands! Like, it has that... But it has that problem that a lot, all the evolving Digimon has is that one of them, one of the evolutions look much worse, and this time the Keramon looks worse than the Diaboromon. Looks awful. But the Diaboromon, you can kind of see where Keramon's like body curls up from because it's in the claw. And of you can the, tell of the, the Diaboromon. There's like a good angle to see this thing from because I bet if you saw it from behind, it would look awful. Oh yes, it's the same with the Black Wall Greymon evolving. Figure. No, the Black Wall Greymon's noticeable from the front because it has like the weird claws tilted back on its on its on its oh, arms. No, that's just, no, that's and just... it's got the big Argmon face on its back. You know, I meant I meant from the back, but the the claws like I'm just pretty sure I'm positioning it badly. <clears throat> but no, the uh, it doesn't look too bad, and I'm excited for it because I always thought there was going to be a D Arts Diaboromon to go along with the War Greymon, but that never came out. And now we have this, so that's fine. The Lost News Lately Mon, first of all, Madfest is this weekend. So as we mentioned, we have media passes. It's going to be really exhausting, isn't it? It's, well, it's only two days. It's not like a three-day convention. Fair enough. So we will be uploading photos to our social media and also we'll be writing a, well, I'll be writing a blog post about it because that's kind of what I do now. I just write blog, blog posts all the time. Yeah, you're pretty good staff that way. Oh my god! I can't. So, did, did you did you give me his email? Like, did you give him my email, or did he just because he emailed me today? Mm-hmm. Did when, when he when you, he asked for stuff? I just said your name. I oh. don't remember giving oh. an email. Okay, well, I guess maybe he did didn't email me that I got the pass too. Well, you have it because he emailed me today and said here is some extra information to go along with your Mad First Press pass. Well, there we go. Okay, I was like okay, but he could have also just guessed that we were together and uh, automatically had us down. That's good. Anyway, we have press passes. I'll be as staff. I'll be posting about it on the blog and uh <laughs> and as the manager of this operation i will be doing very little you'll be walking around in a lost in translation one shirt i will i'll be advertising the show and also probably buying stuff i haven't budgeted for this <laughs> well they, they do have an exclusive cowboy bebop on blu-ray that's going to be there i don't care about that at all i kind of do i like cowboy bebop it's cool i've never watched the whole thing i intend to so- but uh, dvds don't interest me anymore because services on demand make it e- you able to watch whatever you want a girl i liked in high school um she was sleeping over once and i was really into her and i just wanted to make her happy she was like let's watch this cowboy bebop movie and i was like i haven't seen cowboy bebop before and she was like let's watch it anyway and i was like yes (laughs) 
I'm sure that I'll understand everything that's happening. Hey, look, there was a com- there was a computer programmer who was an androgynous female born person with a pet dog. Yeah, that character is never confirmed one way or the other to be anything. I don't think they even have the. I don't know if they go with pronouns in that show. No, no, she, she, she's given female pronouns. She, she's, yeah, we, okay. we know. I'm pretty sure that there's information that she was born female. Oh, I was under the impression that character was never confirmed either way. But it's fine because that that's great, and they're a little computer programmer, and they have a pet dog. Yes, that cookie is cute, and, and that is why to watch the show. Life. So yeah. Yeah, that was a thing. So yeah, we'll be at Madfest, and we're actually recording this episode two days early because of it, because we are getting our press passes early on Friday night, and then I want to edit the podcast on Thursday so we can be at the convention Saturday morning, and I don't have to wake up at like four in the morning just to edit the show. So uh, yeah, we're doing this early, quite early, two days early. Yay. And speaking of blog post, I finally put up that blog post about the comparison of the different services to buy things online. You know, the one that we got an Anonymon asking about last week sounds familiar yeah so I, I wrote that up because my from japan order arrived so check that out we also did an unboxing of the digimon Shinka evolution uh Bat- battle spirits box that's what it's called i forgot what it was called for a second and that was a pretty good unboxing i got some cool cards so check that out if you're interested and then from listeners chisai made us a new sticker for our store as a gift Mm. It's got Edgemon and Lotmon. It's really cute. It's really adorable. And uh, she said that this is for our red bubble. So I'll put it up on the red bubble when I have time. But I'm pretty busy lately. I should buy those. <laughs> Me too. I'll put them more, more on my Warhammer case on my computer. Mm. Right on so the cute. screen. Right, on the sp- right in the middle of the screen. <laughs> well, I'm at my laptop. More like... I'm at the middle of you. But no, it's, it's very, screen. very cute. And we also had a bit more from Magnus. And Magnus created this really nightmarish Patamon. And they oh said... Oh my god. We, uh, they, they, they <laughs> Why did you do this to me? They didn't... Uh, they made it for us a while ago, but it felt like Halloween was the best time to share it. Why? So, uh, yeah, we'll link that in the show notes. <laughs> what did this have to do with us, actually? I still don't know. <laughs> we might have mentioned something about it once. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe it was just like, no, th- this is scary, but it's meant to scare you. <laughs> it's designed to hurt you Look, the it, most it made me happy oh it hurt me i, I just like when oh. people spend time to do things for us i just i know it feels really no, I nice i appreciate that i do and yeah it's it's just really great so thank you and i had a rough week so uh yeah i i really appreciate it i'm very tired and i can't really articulate my uh my appreciation but thank you to both of you and on to obnoxious synopsis the first episode that we're watching this week is called how to fix a broken digivice or resurrecting digivices a new brilliance what do you think will happen this episode? Um, I guess they find Masaru's dad, and at the end of the episode, they like, here's your new Digivice. It's a new design, and it does stuff, probably. It- it'll say, like, it's unlocked your new level of Digisoul. It will make your Digimon so much more powerful And I guess we'll unlock ultimate level and they'll go <gasps> ultimate level? That sounds awesome! So you think Masaru gets... Oh, come on to evolve to ultimate this episode? No, I didn't say that. Okay, you mean they just unlock it? And they just I say they, they are told they are able to do it. Oh, okay, so there's no evolution. Yes. I guess it would be in the title. Yeah, huh? Yeah, you're right. Do you think anything will annoy you in this episode? Um, I, I, I mean, Master's dad needs to have a pretty good explanation why he wasn't just going home. He was talking to God. Yeah, but he could do that and then leave. Good point. I don't know, he just seems like kind of a crap dad. Digimon's full of crap dads. Yeah, it's like the theme of Digimon, they're just not so good. Yeah, it's sort of an unintentional theme. Do you think it'll be a good episode? No. What rating? Five. Filler or not filler? It cannot be. The second episode that we're watching this week is called Journey to the Sacred City, or An Imprisoned Masaru, The Holy City's Trap. Also, I want to say briefly about the last one. What annoys me, and it's something that episode is going to do, so it's not really its fault, but like, you're going to break the digivices and give them new ones in the next episode. That tells me we couldn't figure out how to update them, so let's break them with the force of how angry they were. Well, to be fair, Takato got an upgraded digivice too. And that was very quick. That was within it. That, that was an ep- the end of one episode, and then the next episode he had a new but one. there was a reason for that, wasn't it? Yeah, he got really angry and the digivice smashed. Because you got a dark evolution. Yeah, but a dark evolution at least is something. Not... By the way, the problem is that Digivice um, from Tamers was like a holy object out of the digital world. They have... They operate in a certain way. These ones are just government-issued machines. Right. That the power of friendship is overloading. You're right. No, that is exactly what is happening. You're right. I'm sorry. So, so like, the interaction is different. Yes. And the thing that this show does, and what every Digimon season since Zero Two has done, uh, I think quite badly, is it goes, okay, 
there are all these new rules for how Digimon work. But you've seen all the other Digimon, right? So basically the rules are the same. But it can't be because the rules are different. But well, maybe they're exactly the same. I don't know. Right. Like if one of the Digivices here touched an evil Digimon and it burnt them, I wouldn't be shocked. It would be stupid. But I'd be like, well, that's what Digivices do, right? But yeah, this one shouldn't do it because it's not this holy legendary device. But I, but they're treating it kind of like it is. Yeah, no, I, I, I see your point. I see your point. So what do you think will happen in the second episode? I need which to name is them again. Journey to the Sacred City or an imprisoned Masaru, the Holy City's Trap? Um, I guess the reason Masaru and his dad can't really catch up is that they're like ambushed and he gets captured or something. And then we're going to have um, Toma and Yoshi have to go s- rescue him. But I don't know. Because they kind of suck, they have to go talk to Ben Chuliamon about it, probably. Do you think Masaru's dad has a Digivice? I mean, he should. Do you think he has a partner Digimon? If he has a Digivice, he should. What do you think his partner Digimon would look like? I have literally no way of possibly guessing. Okay, I just thought it would be interesting. There is... Li- how could Pumon. I... It's Pumon. How could I have any information to use with that? I don't know, Pumon? I'm not going to answer your question. Good point. Do you think anything will annoy you in this episode? I'm just going to say yes. Do you think it'll be a good episode? No. What rating? Four. Filler or not filler? That's really difficult. Yeah, okay, because it's got a fillery title. Um, um, it does sound a very fillery title, but it's coming off an episode that was really important. Or oh, potentially so, important. That is probably important. Look, let's go with... Ye- let's go with yes, because I think that he'll probably be captured and then, like, freed in the sa- in, a, in such a short amount of time. Right. So we're going with yes We're filler. going with yes. All right. Well, like, any more predictions about either of these two episodes? Uh, no. So no evolutions in these episodes? I can't imagine there would be. We just get a little bit of, like, hint towards them? Yes. Okay. Well, I guess on to the show and we'll see if you're right or wrong. Let's go. Episode 29, and I noticed something weird at the start, where in the dub, interestingly enough, in the intro, they haven't edited it or updated it to have the perfect shown as their actual forms and not just their silhouettes. Like, they're still the silhouettes and shadows, and I found that was an interesting sort of thing. Like, in previous seasons, they'd, they'd updated it using the graphics from the updated one from the original version, but this one, they've left it more or less the same. Like, I don't think there's anything that they've changed to update it. I know, I found that was an interesting thing that they added. Does it change later? Or changed. Uh, I don't remember i actually no i you know what i don't i don't remember because i've never seen the dub of digimon data squad fair enough like this well, is the first time the I'm next the episode yeah it's still the, it's still the same okay and if the, the original we get a a new version a new opening in the next episode but we'll guess we'll get to that you know what i noticed koki's fighting a tree no, besides that like while he's being angry in a tree and like the girls doing her makeup whatever um what happens is they're having their conversation yeah and kurada not only gets on the microphone on sorry on the video call but he responds as though he had been listening to them the whole time. Yeah. But he's clearly just showed up on the video call. How is the first words he says a continuation of their conversation? That is, a, I didn't realize that. Um, I guess I just assumed that he was just kind of that he could hear them, but they couldn't hear him. But why wouldn't he have been up on the screen at least? Like, is, as, was he sitting there with holding the button down where it keeps the screen blank, but he's like listening? It's like, okay, I gotta wait. It would be rude if I just started talking now. I think so. I, th- I think that... that no, you don't happen. think so. No, That's you, wrong. On the other hand, it is actually a little bit dumb. It, 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 you're right. It makes no sense that he could just magically know what they're talking about. <laughs> No, I didn't. I did not realize that, and I'm. Try- I can't even try to justify this. Like <laughs> it's just silly. It's, just, it's it's silly. He he shouldn't be able to hear them. Uh, and he just like, oh, calm down. You're all being stupid. And Ivan says how the angry outbursts that Koki is making won't do any do any good. In the dub, he just says to calm down. Um, and then uh, if they're being stupid, what's Yoshi doing? Being way stupider. Yeah, using the broken Digivice. <laughs> Imagine standing there with, I don't know, let's pre- let's call it a Game Boy, right? That had been like completely blasted in a fire and like pressing the buttons being like, it'll definitely work this time. It's all melted and the screen's completely broken and there's no batteries in it, but it'll work. Yeah. Yeah. It, but I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that it was, we actually give her something to do and her some screen time or something. What, to look like a moron? Well, yes, I guess. <laughs> oh, well, good enough. At least she was on screen. 
So then Masaru says they should go back to they should go to Wanderer's Cape because that's where his dad might be. And then Tom attacks Masaru because the biohybrid's coming past. And they're coming past because and this make this this part I'm, I'm not sure if you picked up on, but in the last scene Karada told them to just devote themselves to the Digimon hunt for now and just ignore the 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 Dats people because they're the, the, the Dats has been basically closed down and that they're powerless and they're just those three and they should actually focus sure. on the Digimon hunt. And then in this scene they are looking for Dats. They've they've disregarded what Karada had said. Yeah, I noticed that. But also, what I noticed primarily yeah. was they act as if they know that Masaru and Ko are in the area. Yeah. But why would they think that? Yeah, and we've... we've it's just a random valley. I mean, we have been shown how big the digital world is, and it's more or less the same size as the human world. So I don't know how they would assume that they were there. You're, you're right. Okay, so here's a here's a very short story. Once a, in earlier this year, early this year, yeah, um, there was a missing missing persons alert where a girl had gone missing in a like a suburb, and there was a bunch of people who went out looking for her, and I was out there with the search parties and stuff, and it turns out that finding one person in like even a reasonably small area like a suburb is pretty much impossible unless like they're moving around and you know and like walking into people and this is in like a a suburb where things are ordered and they can't just be in like random houses and in like hidey holes and stuff so that's my experience of searching for people whereas these guys are in the wilderness and they think if you run straight forward all together that's going to increase your chances of finding your prey yeah no you have a point but also i think that savers has written badly oh Oh, yeah well the the part of the Digimon, the Digimon world that is actually relevant is a very small, small part. Because remember, and I've, you brought this up as an issue with Savers last episode, is that how could they have killed basically all of the population of Digimon if it's the same size of the human world? Or as a further question, how could they have done that when Bancho Leomon was around? He can kill three Gizmon XTs, which are way more powerful than any Gizmon that was around beforehand. Yes. In like two seconds. With no sweat, he did fine. Yeah, because he said he was a couple of million years old. One million, yeah. yeah. But the, And then the further thing is, if he's able to do that, there must be other Digimon who are at least near his power level. I guess. Here's, here's the thing. If he can beat up three Gizmon ATs, then there must be a couple of Digimon who are one third of his power level and can one-on-one these things, and then the Digimon world is saved, and you don't need the Dats kids. That's statistics. Right, yeah. No, you have a point. It's just the show's totally inconsistent about power level, so it's like, yeah, you know, you definitely need these kids, except no, but there's Digimon who can totally handle themselves. But also, there's even though there are Digimon who can handle themselves, they're like, all getting massacred okay. and they're all dead. When has Digimon ever been accurate with power levels? I, I feel like Adventure tried. You mean Adventure try? No. I know, Adventure tried. I feel like Tamers gave a reason for power levels not to be like on the same level because remember, Renamon was absorbing Digimon and sort of, was yeah. getting stronger without even evolving and was able to be adult level Digimon as a child level Digimon. Renamon doesn't look like a child level Digimon. I mean, she's not. Like, no, she does. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yes. No. It's because she's more mature than Tailmon. Yes. Uh, than, not Tailmon. Uh, she does look more chill than Gil- Tailmon, you're Gil- right. Gilmon and Terrymon. Yes. Because they're babies. That is correct. Yeah. And then, we, meanwhile, we have Marine Angemon, who's an, an ultimate level Digimon. Ultimate mm-hmm. Omega. Mm-hmm. Well. Size is also inconsistent. Well, that's, that's one that doesn't matter quite as like, much, does I feel it? like Atmon was good with power levels, right? Um, sort of. It I even, mean, it, it, like, God was essentially they unbeatable. T- they just told you the numbers. Yes. Which made more sense than just, like, this is an armor level Digimon, and this is an adult level Digimon. Do you know which one's stronger? Do you know how they compare? No clue. We don't. Armor level is, like, it seems like the mistake that Digimon can't get rid of. Well, they keep on bringing them back in Tamers, Frontier, Savers, as, you know, Monster of the Week. Yeah, and they're like, we don't know what to do with these. Guys. We have all these designs from the card game and the and the Wonder Swan games, but like no Why one did likes we do them. This to ourselves? At least we've got Rinkmon. Okay, I mean I don't think it's that cool. Rinkmon's the coolest. You only like it because it's your weird fan fiction. Yeah, it was in my fan fiction, but also, but also, it's very cool. Anyway, so they see a building instead of the Wanderer's Cape. Well, at the Wanderer's Cape instead of that mansion, which is called the DigiSoul do- Dojo, and in the dub it's called the DNA Charge Dojo. Because that makes so much sense. So, so the Digimon Natural Ability Charge Dojo. Yes. Yeah. So DNA stands for Digital Natural Ability. Really? Yes. What? Why would it be called that? I know they already have an acronym for it. I mean, no, I mean, like, why would Digimon call it the Digimon Natural Ability Charge? That is very clearly a human term for a thing that humans do to Digimon, 
rather than a a natural phenomenon that Digimon observe. Right, yes. But see, I'm more upset by the fact that it went from Digisoul Charge and DNA Charge to Digisoul and then DNA Charge being a translation on Digisoul, or rather a localization. Yeah, Digisoul could have worked just fine. What I noticed is, um, specifically here when they asked Bancho Liamon, hey, where did that hotel go? In the Japanese, he's like, no, this dojo's here now. Because that's the digital world. It's a weird place. That happens, right? Mm-hmm. He understands it. So he's like, no, that's it. Do you notice what happened in English? Uh, I think I wrote it down. I don't quite remember off the top Ho- of my head. Hotel? What are you talking Hotel? This is a dojo. Yeah, yeah, that's He right. has no idea what they're talking about. Although, I've come to learn that the reason they do that, I think, in the English now, is when I see stuff that I'm like, that's not consistent at all. Most of the time, except for like the seven deadly sins feed off emotions etc stuff most of the time the english makes more sense in the long run because they have hindsight yes and we don't i, I mean we we hope that the in the original version the writers had a plan well this part doesn't make, make a difference at the end of the day uh so bancho leomon asks them what what did you even means and masaru says it has to do with evolution and then yoshino doesn't know either it's so weird that they decided to waste like 30 seconds of your time with this bit Mm-hmm. That says nothing other than remember when we showed you that Yoshi was an idiot. Well, she still is. I, did you solve that? Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Mm. I'm so useful. And I feel like she should know, or she should have an inkling what it is because she's been with her partner the longest. Yeah, exactly. She's been like an agent for like ten years. How did she not know by now? And considering the answer was fairly uh-huh. obvious, like it's already something we knew. We know that. Digisol and humans and Digimon all react to the emotions of the human and the Digimon respond to that. And I feel like we have Toma, who's a genius, and we have Yoshino, who has, what, like 10 years experience, maybe 10, more than 10 years experience of being with her partner. Yeah, but everyone regresses to the mean. And then like, oh, it's in the end, it's Masaru who figures it out, not the genius or the person who's been with their partner for 10 years. Well, yeah, because they can summon their DNA charge, but he has to punch things. Which I love. So he would understand the most because he has to do stuff and doesn't control it directly like they do. Yeah. Hmm. I I don't think they've thought this one through. Maybe. Banjo Leomon says it's natural that Digivice is broke because they don't know anything about what Digisol actually is. Yeah, it's natural, these machines that aren't natural, that they reacted this way. I would know, because I'm a lion who didn't design them. Well, they're made to react to the Digisol, presumably. Yeah, but how does Bancho Leomon know how they work? Good point. It's like, come on! So... Uh, he, he gets them inside um, and Master even though he says he's, he was meant to be friends with Bancho Leomon or like Banchos are always good guys he gets instantly super angry yeah, he with them saying how he wants to punch him and fight him and it's not just like I will fight you because of the honour it seems to be I'm going to fight you because you're annoying me and I don't like you and also I'd like to point out that in the dub Bancho Leomon's personality has changed from I like friends and being really friend centred to not even mentioning yeah, friends once he doesn't once. obsess about friends anymore that's a weird thing to have happened yeah which is in that one episode because they needed to translate some things. Um, and then uh, this, the Digimon have to be left outside, which I thought was silly. And then it makes sense in the future with like what's what the real plan is. Although that real plan is so stupid when you think about it that like... Because Bancho Leomon's relying on the bad guys showing up? No, it's worse than that. He's not only relying on the bad guys showing up, he's relying on the bad guys defeating the kids as Digimon but not killing them. Or, or Even the though their entire job is Digimon genocide. Yes. Yeah. So here's a question for you. Mm-hmm. Why would Masaru come out... Okay, okay. If Masaru doesn't do the fighting necessarily on his own most of the time, he needs Agumon to do it, why would he come out of the force field to go help Agumon when he's already dead? Not saying that he wouldn't go help, but like, what additional temptation would there be? And if you kill Agumon, what's the worst case scenario? He stays behind the force field in the wooden shack and dies? I don't know. Like, what What was Koki thinking? I don't the answer know. was nothing. He I- wasn't. Because I don't think Koki's really the thinker. But all three of them are stupid. And but the thing is, I don't it, think Nana- I don't think Nanami's stupid. She seems probably the smartest out of them. Then all why of them. didn't she just kill the Digimon she was fighting? Good point. There's literally no reason for them not to kill the Digimon that when they beat them, and they have like ten minutes to do something about it once they've already won. Nanami's my favorite. Sure. So yeah, they, they think this is all stupid. Um. So there's the blue. The mannequins go blue and start stand up. Yeah. Also, I want to say that the Digimon say, "Hey." I want to come too. I want to come too. And Banjo Leomon says they can't because you, they need to. The partners need to learn by themselves, and they should trust their partners. And the dub, it's more or less the same, except Banjo Leomon says plus there aren't enough chairs for the Digimon. There are no chairs. I know there are no chairs in general. Like the kids are sitting on the floor, so I don't know why this is a line. 
Well, I mean, he's technically telling the truth. Inside the dojo, Bancho Leamon says that they are unable to control of their Digisoul, they have no future. In the dub, he says if they don't learn what that he's about to teach them, they will have no future. So it goes from like, you need to control this to you need to learn this. But it's still, you will have no future is the end thing. I guess. We have to assume then that he hung around with like Suguru for a long time. Because how could he otherwise know what a Digisoul is? Right, that's fair. Or to know what a Digivice is. Yeah. Or to know that it's called a Digivice. Yes. Or to know their exact carrying load capacity of love. Or how, yeah, how they work and how they react and what Digisoul is. Because presumably, did Digimon have any idea what Digisoul is? Well, it's not a thing that Digimon have. Mm. It's a thing that humans have. And the only time that we've ever seen a Digimon react to Digisoul is when they're remembering Suguru's Digisoul. Yes. And also, Leomon's never met any other humans, as far as we're aware. Yes. So do you think he's met Suguru? Well, I have to assume that he has, because otherwise this would all be stupid nonsense you think wouldn't like it like his partner or something no i just think they've met it's just one of those hey you've helped me b- turn a desert into an ocean this one time i guess that's, that's how that works because that's a power that he has now yeah because it just turns out that the thing about deserts you know how they're all dry and like completely bereft of water look about five centimeters below the surface is a is pretty much an ocean look you you can turn anything to water if you punch hard enough <laughs> you, can, you can turn any desert into an ocean if you're angry enough you just punch it with the digisol it made it water that that's how science works right i'm a i'm a scientimonologist <laughs> you're a science knowledgeist yes Masaru goes to punch Bancho Leomon because he hates him now, apparently, despite saying Being how much friends. he loved him before. Bancho Leomon dodges and tells him to fight the wooden figures instead. Yoshino says they only want to repair the digivices, and Tomo wants to leave, but the door is electrified or has a force field or something. It's the latter. Yeah. And Masaru says he's happy to fight the figures because he likes to fight. <laughs> I am Masaru, and I love to fight. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> In the next scene, we have my favorite thing ever, which is Agumon chasing a bottomon. It's really cute. I assume he's very hungry. He would eat a bottom. Well, <laughs> considering he does immediately, uh, like, after chasing the bottomon, say, I'm hungry. Yeah, that was what I was like. So he's just he's trying to eat the baby. I never made that connection, but now I'm a little There's bit There's no concerned. context on why that baby's there, so he just went out hunting. He's like, I want to eat. It's a big muffin. I'm That's just chasing disturbing. it around. Well, what did you want to eat, right? Because apparently, right? Yeah. They get hungry in the digital world. But, I mean, there was food in, in Frontier, at least. We saw that. But yes. there's no food in this one. No, there is. There's, there's a feast in the next episode. I guess. They gotta eat meat, though, right? I think so. Where does that come from? Babies. Aww. Don't want Digimon to eat babies. That's awful. Lalamon wonders if they can trust Bancho Leomon. And then she says that they should. In the dub, Lalamon adds that she's afraid of the alternative. <laughs> you know who classically says we should trust the stranger? The same person who asks should we trust the stranger? Stranger. Oh, that's classic writing. I love it. It's worrying. Should we jump off this cliff? Yes, I think we should. You've not asked any of us for an opinion. You've just come to the conclusion on that question on your own. Yep. That sounds about right. (laughs) Thanks, Lolomon. You're definitely not trash. Now we get a shot of Toma and Masaru fighting the wooden figures and Yoshino sitting there. So what are the odds that she learns nothing and doesn't get her Digisoul because she doesn't participate? Apparently zero. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But you know what I'm actually happy with Savers for doing? Is that they actually remembered that Toma is an Olympic boxer because he's actually using boxing moves. Okay, well, he has a boxing kind of style, but at the same time, like, yeah, he's doing it. Like, I'm pretty sure at the start of Digimon Savers, I can't remember if this was on the show or when it was, but I'm pretty sure he said, hey, do they just forget that Toma's a boxer later on? The answer is no. They can never forget. That's why they put boxing gloves on Galmon. So he- <laughs> it's literally a reminder. Like, okay, uh, what's, it, what's this character do again? Oh, boxing gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what they needed? One of those like weird like doctor reflector things on the forehead. Yeah. Now that would make you remember the other thing about his character. And then you give Galmon no parents. And that's how you know the last one. I was about to say you give him a dead mother. No, that's sad. He's also jealous of Masaru's dad though. Yes. So he's got no parents. Yeah, well, he's got a butler. So he's basically Batman. Yes. Toma is Batman. It's basically, basically Batman. Rich family, dead parents. Uh huh. Butler. B- perf- like amazing fighter. Also a doctor, so he's a big genius as well. Fights crime. He's Batman. He's, ba- he's basically Batman. Na 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 na. Toma. Tom man. Tom man. Tom man. <laughs> That's awful. But Dog also- man. Woo. Marcus says it's hard to fight with Bancho Leomon talking. And Thomas asks how many of the wooden figures there are. And I'm like, Thomas, you're a genius and there are three. (laughs) 
I like to point out there are three. That line. Two people are fighting. Oh, it can only come out of the place where they're knocking them out of the. Is this in the English? Did, did that line was in the English version. Okay, that can only stem from they're knocking them off frame. And then we understand they're rebuilding themselves, but the writer was like, oh, they come back. I wonder how many there are. I was I haven't been paying attention to the whole episode, so I don't know. Right, so you're saying that the person who wrote the translation was confused. Is seeing how they keep on coming up and he's thinking, Okay, Toma is defeating them. Yes. And then there are more that are spawning. Yes. Okay, so it's like a wave of enemies. Well what what's more likely? That that's what's being implied, or he can't count to three. Well, neither can Valve. That's fair enough. Thomas works works at Valve, that's that's where his parents are, I guess. Is that how he made all his money? Yes. Or his dad or something. Maybe his dad, his dad is... Uh, well, we know he's, the dad is white, so maybe he's Gabe. <laughs> this is Gay Ben. Gay Ben. Uh, and Tom is just making all his sweet cash, making uh, Team Fortress 2 hats. And Dota. Dota hat. And the Invitational. The, the International? But I, invita- I said Invitational. <laughs> yeah. He did. The Digimon are playing Hopscotch, which I'm not sure when they would work out when this existed. I guess when they were in the... I guess Lalamon maybe saw it in the real world. They were in school. World. But also maybe they just maybe it's a classic Digimon game. You know, again we have to throw a rock and hop through little uh, little circles. I think that every Digimon, including the um, El Doradomon, can totally play. I would love to see El, El Doradomon like hopscotch. Also, like just while we're on the topic, literally did not remember El Doradomon was in a, it was a Digimon at all. Was kind of a bit amazed when I saw him. What the hell is that thing? Is this Discworld? Yes. Turtles partially the way down. In the dub, Lalamon says that Garmon always wins. And I just want to point out that I love the music that the dub is playing at the moment. It's just, it's so goofy and so fun. And they play it during the Digimon scenes in this episode. And then it sort of contrasts with the serious, like, character-defining moments we're having with Bancho Leomon, I guess. I mean, sure. I wasn't particularly impressed by it, but I'm not particularly impressed by this season anymore, so that's yeah, fair. Yeah, you're just not impressed by anything Digimon since Atmon. Yeah, you that just, was... You just finished watching Atmon, you're like, well, that that's, was a that's, good time. As, that's as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah, and try and Shy Chapter 5 was like, well, this is as bad as it gets. And then the same day the finale of Atmon came out and it was amazing. It was all worth it. Agumon hears someone coming. It's the biohybrids. They ask where the partners are and the Digimon form a barrier because they're geniuses. And they say, we'll never tell you. And Nanami points out that they must be in the building because they're in the way. I have a quick question for you. Is this still the same day? Well, we haven't seen them go to bed. No, we haven't. And I feel like they've the only the only it is possible it's been different if they if there was a sleep on the way to the cape, but we don't know. We haven't seen them go to bed at all. No, we really have, and we we haven't seen it even dip to nighttime. No. Well, does does this world go to nighttime? Have we seen it go to nighttime? We've seen it go dark, but that's because of weather or fire on the sky or something. I'm not sure if we saw nighttime. I can't remember either, but. I mean, the question is, basically, is this the third time they're fighting the Biofrontier kids in the same day? This time they win. Having lost twice already? This seems seems honestly a little bit reminiscent of uh, Frontier. Oh, a little bit! (laughs) How they lost, like, several times in the same day. What else is reminiscent of Frontier? What? The new, the new opening. Those those Royal Knights, huh? What? The Royal Knights are in the new opening. Are they? Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Are they really? There's a bunch of them. Oh, was Dukemon's it? there. Oh, really? How do you, how do you not notice Did that? I, I just didn't pay attention. I was too excited by seeing Rosemon and Mirage Galgamon and Shine Greymon. I guess I'm. The Royal Knights are there, and I'm like, yeah, of course, Yggdrasil's in this. Why wouldn't the Royal Knights be there? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. How would you? Fit? You knew they were in this series. Yeah, but I didn't realize that. It's, the- in, the, it's in the intro to the next episode, which, by the way, doesn't introduce the royal knights. Welp. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> Why would they change intro? Do th- okay. Do you think the royal knights are good or bad in this? Oh, season? they're awful. Or do you mean good? Good guys or bad guys? Yeah. Oh, they're the bad guys. They're never good guys. But you know what? I'll, no, I can't say it because he's got experience. Um, they're gonna have a companion, probably Bancho Leomon. Say the royal knights. They're the good guys. What are they doing? Why are they you, being evil? I'm gonna evil? give you a hint. Someone at Dats, their Digimon is a Royal Knight. Is it one of the Pawn Chessmon? I'm not going to tell you who it is. Okay. But it is it is one of the Royal Knights. It's probably um, 
the, cap- the captains. I'm still not going to tell assume. you. I don't but know. There is a real night. If I just go pay attention to the intro more, I'm sure I'll pick it up. Apparently, I need to pay attention to the intro more. I guess I'm going to watch this straight after I. I'm thinking, did I misidentify them? No, I know that Duke One's in there because I saw him. But second, if I said Duke One was in there and you said, no, he's not, then I'd see it. But now that you're like, yeah, he is, sure. Oh, all right. <laughs> Here we are. Awful. Um, I hope you liked Savers. I didn't for the, anymore. For the first 20 episodes. It, does it just get a lot worse no, now? No, no, no. I, I, I think it gets better. Is this the only good thing the Royal Knights are in? Because... Yes. We're, we're, we're zero for two or three right now. I think this might be the best thing the Royal Knights are in. Yeah, we're definitely zero for three. So um, we're batting one for four, maybe? Try chapter three was good. Yeah, but we're still We're still waiting on how try is overall negative for me right now. We still... If try chapter six is good, the Royal Knights can be can be good in that. Yeah, sure. Which we, means... We don't even they're Royal Knights. But anyway, we're, we're back to you the... a maximum 50%. So back to the episode. Lalamon says that they have to believe in their partners and they can't just, you know, wor- worry and worry about being destroyed right now maybe you should worry about being destroyed right now actually yeah because this is plot armor this is plot armor right now and right. you not you have to be able to identify the only reason they're not terror in mortal terror is well we can't die because we're the main characters yeah that too you're right yoshino toma and Mas- masaru ask what's going on and banjo leomon says that even if they knew there's nothing they can do because they have to be here the digimon are outside and are defending the house and they said they believe in their partners by a Thunderbird Mom picks up Agumon and yells out to Masaru if he doesn't come out, he's going to kill Agumon. Why in doesn't the, he just kill him? In the dub, it's, you're going to be a goner. Well, I think Koki wants to have this sort of vengeance against him and win the sort of score and settle the score that they have, that this battle that they're having because it's to do with pride at this point. You know if, how easy that would be to do if you kill this Digimon? That's revenge right there. Well, I guess he can't fight without his Digimon. No, you can fight with his fist and then you just punch him in the face with his big bird fist and you win. With your big bird abs. Also, if you don't like, if you want to get back at Masaru specifically then kill the other people's digimon because who cares about them ouch yeah well yeah but s- still unfortunately there was no death to be had because <laughs> unfortunately because oh i'll oh, go on too bad you didn't die because masaru decides to go super saiyan oh yeah he does do that he goes does the big charge up thing and then Bancho Leomon tells him to control it and asks what he what he wishes for. Masaru says that he wants to save Agumon and the others. In the dub, Marcus says he wants to save Agumon and them all. The Digisol responds to Digimon and Human Emotion, and we already knew that, but thanks for telling us again, show. And then he goes Super Saiyan Ultra Instinct. Yeah, and in the dub, it said that DNA charges Human Emotion and it responds to Digimon, instead of the other way around, again. I'm pretty sure we had this discussion like 20 episodes ago about how DNA charges the opposite of Digisol, is that Digisol is Digimon responding to humans and and the other one and DNA charge is human emotion responding to Digimon and but not Digimon responding to humans. Also, doesn't this walk back the whole Digimon feed on emotion stuff? Because they don't. Well, they now feed, it's react to now, instead. No, now they feed on the Digisol which reacts to the emotions. But, uh, but does that mean that the bank robber mole thing was feeding on their Digisol? Yes. yes. What? Well, I mean, it's something that we can... Did the bank yes. robbers have Digisol? You'll find out. You'll find out that kind of thing. Really? Maybe. Toma and Yoshino have it too because they're like, oh, right, we too have it. Oh, also, they men- he mentions it very in passing because we mentioned the seven deadly sins ages ago. Yeah. But they're- now they the seven classifications of emotion. But also there's another one which is protecting your friends. Yeah, it's the, uh, the eighth deadly sin, protecting your friends. <laughs> Yeah, there are seven saintly virtues. That's the other side of the coin. Yeah, you know, courage, friendship, love, reliability, purity, it's more or less hope, that, honestly. Light. Yes, exactly. It's pretty much. People have matched up the the seven crests to the seven deadly sins. Also, the eighth the eighth deadly sin is darkness next to light. I also, guess. Also, there were like seven new deadly sins they put out like a bunch of years ago, and I feel like internet di- internet addiction was one of them. Being a millennial. Yeah, pretty much. Being a rotten millennial, having a selfie stick. Why do you have that? It takes good cosplay shots. Oh, yeah. No, they're actually good if you actually have a reason for them. Besides just taking faraway selfies. They're good for cosplay. Anywho, banjo tells them to scan the Digisol. And the Digivice has evolved to the Digivice Burst. Oh, my God. How does he know this is going to happen? Because, May, even if he knew about the Digivice design from Suguru, who presumably designed them. Yeah. A, why didn't Suguru design to be... 
designed them to be the burst in the first place. The burst place. And B, how did he know that they have to break first and then you have to recharge them and then they just become the burst because that's how things work apparently? I don't know. How do the characters know the things? And also just like... They're just government-issued devices that they made in the real world. What is it? Okay, to be totally fair to Digivices, in Frontier, when you looked inside them, they were clearly magic. Yes. But when they were made in a factory in China, which is totally possible in this case, why is the why is the construction of it in any sort of special way that it can morph after being broken? You have a point, you have a point. Because it's not a Digimon. It doesn't have an interaction with Digisoul. It's just a device. Masaru's Digisoul destroys some of the wooden figures. I guess all of them. We don't really know. And then bursts out the house. Masaru runs to Agumon and Agumon says that he believed in him. Unlike I want to point out this is not a dream sequence. At some point, out, some point, Bio Thunderbirdmon has dropped Agumon. Oh, yeah. Because he watched all of that and said to himself... I shouldn't kill this Digimon. I better put down my hostage and uh, walk away. He just pops him on the floor, pats him on the head and flies back up, I guess. <laughs> oh, and... Uh, I'll let them have a little conversation outside the protection of the bubble and just just look at them. Look, just, just you look can at always them from a say, distance. how nice a Digimon antagonist that let you have a conversation before killing you. It's, uh, it's a bit nice. Like, how many times while watching Digimon have we just said the bad guy could literally swoop in and murder someone right now? Like, when we're having, you know, the motivational speech of love and the power of friendship and the bad guy is just standing there watching. Just fire a cannon at them. Yeah. You know what happened. Vampimon needed? A gun. Yeah, but Pinocchimon had one of those. That's true, but he couldn't him. aim. Yeah, he was also bad at aiming. He was, he was also, like, one of the scariest villains because of it. Yeah. Oh, look, a gun. <laughs> I mean, Piedmon was scary because... He was effective. He was, it was also a clown. He was a creepy looking clown dude. Yeah. But Pinocchio was probably like... We're all Digi down here. Jesus. So we, he scans his Digisoul and it's Digisoul Charge Overdrive. In the dub, it's DNA Charge Overdrive. Ogumon evolves to Shine Greymon and then Toma and Yoshino do it too. Shine Greymon looks awful, by the way. Looks I think he's terrible. okay. I think he's okay. It looks like I, a I, really I, bad... It looks like a it looks like a rip-off toy of Digimon. Like, it's not even a Digimon toy. It's a, someone who like said, oh, I can make a Digimon, whatever, and just threw it together. I think it's fine. It looks so bad. I can't believe when I first saw Lalamon's evolution... By the way, I they're calling it double warp evolution in the dub they call it du- because we already had warp evolution in with warp digivolution but warp just means skip it doesn't mean you can't double warp it's a single warp but this is weird because previously in the dub in digimon adventure it was warp digivolve which was child to me- uh, i guess we were using the dub terms rookie to mega or we had one it was champion to mega and that was angemon to seraphimon yeah but it's, it's just skipping over a bit but here's the thing right you can't be double warp because it it warps up to perfect whatever yeah and then it does a regular evolution to yes. ultimate if, the, if it's doing two evolutions so the second one's not a warp anymore however the interesting thing is that we all in the original version it's just evolve yeah well, it's it evolve be. no matter what it's just oh you're evolving mm. it's not it's not super evolve it's not ultimate evolve it's just evolve because we established they always go to the highest power level why wouldn't they yeah and and i guess that's fine with savers because why would they want to go to a lower power level there's no there's reason no they timer. would so what I was trying to say is Lalamon does a revolution and I go and I see the beginning and I go, that looks like Rosemon. That's weird. Because I know Rosemon is Palamon's ultimate. They wouldn't do that. I wonder what this one's gonna be called. Cause you know, L- L- Lila Lilamon looks different to Lilymon, whatever. Oh, it's it's just Rosemon. Yeah. There, there she is. Palamon didn't evolve to Rosemon until Try. Yeah, but it was planned. It was planned. Plant. Plant. <laughs> Also, her attack is Rose Rapier. She has two whips. Yeah. Wouldn't it be Rose Whip? Look, I don't care because she's not hitting them with her bum. Even though, very focused the on... The original focus... In the original version, it focuses on the bum and the right in a there. lot. A lot. Directly in there. Like, extreme amounts. And the thing is with Rosemont is, I guess... We always focus on her in a fan fervency way, and it's annoying because in Digimon Adventure Try, she had like pretty immense jiggle physics. Mm. Uh, so the fight goes. Also, also, uh, we, we didn't mention, but Galmon also is there and becomes Mirage Galgamon. He looks fine. Looks all right. I like Rosemon the best. <laughs> I mean, that one's the best design because I already know it. Uh, so the Biofrontier kids are upset that they lose that they lose the fight. And then they get blown up. And the only thing... If they get hit like this, you have to assume that they die. But because the cliff breaks, Uh you're like, oh, they got away. 
what what is it about cliffs breaking and falling into the abyss of in digimon means children escape death mm. that's usually how you die also i just want to point out that in this fight rosemon is against the girl which yes. is annoying i thought you you know what i thought to myself may is probably upset that they paired the women up oh but it doesn't matter because it's essentially randomized right and here we are. Yeah, I was really happy that last time it was just like they weren't paired together. But this one is, but it's only at least one attack. But in the dub, Bile Coadelmon actually says, I'll get the girl. Fair enough. Maybe Nanami's a lesbian. Master says, I'm still going to punch you, Lion Man. I'm still angry, even though you solved all of our problems. Bajaliamon tells them to not forget this power. And Masaru says that if they made a mistake, their Digimon would have died. Yes. And he's just saying, look, you can say what you... Like, because Bachelor Liamon's saying, oh, well done, but don't forget this power. And Masara's saying, look, it, 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 this wasn't just luck. You know, this is this was really scary. We could have lost our partners. You rolled the dice with our lives. That's uncool. In the dub, Marcus is, is just really, really aggressive and just says, I want to fight you, Bachelor Liamon. We're going to fight. Let's fight. Let's fight. Bachelor Liamon tells them to go to the holy, si- the holy capital. In the dub, it's Sacred City. And we find out the new Digivice is called the Digivice Burst. It's so bad. And Toma wonders who Bachelor Liamon is. Is it just dead? What do you think of this episode as someone who was new to Digimon? Um, I I kind of felt like I was l- looking through the entire plot the whole time, so I I didn't enjoy it. I th- I felt like it was incredibly weak. Where they're just like, oh, first of all, I could tell it was the twist of oh, we're in- I'm intentionally trapping you in here and getting your putting your Digimon in danger so that you evolve. But like nothing about that made that plan made any sense. Yeah. First of all, it should have failed almost immediately. Second, it was based on premise like that the bad guys would show up at that time, mm. which you could have set that up like Bancho Liamon led them there, and then you could have had Lilamon asking, sorry, Lilamon asking, should we trust him? And then you don't know because he like led the bad guys there maybe earlier in the episode, so you don't know whether you should trust yeah. him or not. And then, and then you, when he says, "I'm keeping you in here," they, they could have had like a plot around it where it at least was something. Mm. But instead, they just went with a really obvious ploy that ended in a stupid way. And now they've fixed their digivices with the power of the digi of Miracles. It was a very easy fix, and it didn't take a couple of episodes. And them not being able to evolve was never actually a problem. I honestly thought that they would just get angry, and their, digiv- their Digisol would be something they naturally had, and they didn't need digivices anymore. I would have been way happier with that than it magically fixed them. That's fair. Because if, if you just say the digivices are just channeling ports for energy but like, jay jay how could they sell the toys if they didn't have a digivice toy but they already had digivices know, but, but then they then they were able to release an, another digivice jay they were able to release the digivice burst as a toy this is upsetting also interestingly enough the burst is the same in both versions meanwhile the ic is the original name and the data link is the english dub name what would you rate this episode like a four see i gave it a six when i first watched it but I feel like I just gave it a six because I like evolution episodes. Boy, do you. So I feel like it's more like a five or a 5.5. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was kind of bad. I just feel like I didn't get as much enjoyment out of this episode as I had previous episodes. And, you know, talking about it, it was just kind of like a... It happened. (laughs) Boy, did it. It was basically just like... They know, filled it, the time. Yes, it, it feels like that. It feels like they filled the time with this episode, and they just said, we have to get them to evolve, but we don't know how. Just be really angry. We'll solve all the problems and all the things that are difficult to write by yeah. a stupid plan. Yes, and, and that's sad when they go down that way of like, oh, we've written ourselves into a hole, and we've got like this this problem, and we can't fix this problem easily. Let's just make up something and hope for the best that the kids don't notice. It's sad, because I feel like you could have solved it easily and you could have stretched it over a couple episodes so yes, who's and, the fool now and as i said it was never a problem that they couldn't evolve right i mean in this episode the problem was that they were trapped inside the house yes i mean like it is implied they couldn't evolve because yeah. the digivices don't work and they hit the- they hit from the bio hybrids and they said hey we can't evolve our digimon but it never was like they never had to find any strategy in oh let's let's use stealth instead of violence and we we could have had like this a couple of episodes where they just use stealth and because of what of because of they use these skills and they use thought maybe they unlock their stronger digisol this way it does sort of feel like they've introduced a problem i.e breaking the digivices only to instantly solve it so that they could move things along it does seem very quickly fixed yes 
because it was one episode. Yes. How did this episode compare to predictions in Noxious Synopsis? Uh, I thought they'd go find Master is dead this episode because I thought he would be the only one who could fix them. I couldn't have got in my... I couldn't have assumed that they would rage them back into being fine. In fact, into a new update. So I was wrong because this is insane. Well, next time you're having problems updating your iOS or Android version, just get really upset. I, I do. And it doesn't help. Just get really mad. Like, the, the whole message that Savers gives to us is nothing is impossible if you can't rage hard enough. If you rage if hard enough. If you punch it good enough. If you punch hard enough, yes. That too. But also you have to be very angry. Oh, by the way, go to the go to the holy capital. Also that too. You know, the capital of the country. What yeah, because that's what capitals are. What was the major difference that you noticed? Okay, so this one is weird because it doesn't have to do with anything that was in this episode or its translation. Right. What it is, is if you were watching the English version of, of, um, of Savers last episode, and then you can watch this one. You start to think to yourself, who is this Bancho Leamon and wh- why doesn't he care about his friends anymore? Right, so you're talking about how Bancho Leamon goes from being like this friend cra- crazy guy to this guy who's kind of just like... Just a dude. Just a dude. His personality completely changed between the two episodes. Oh, yes. No, it, it did. But And that is that is a big difference, but my main difference is the whole Digisol reacts to human emotion and Digimon react to that rather than Digimon the other way around. It's just, I don't know. Seems narrow. I know, and it's the same as we had a couple of episodes ago with the discussion of why Digimon come to the human world. It's it's reversed in both in the other version. And it's just it's just weird to me. Like, why would they not stick with something the same? Why would they go a different way of explaining something? It seems weird to me. Episode 30 starts off with basically what is season 5's version of walking through the, de- the desert. And they're walking through a forest. In the dub, and I just want to say this, Marcus calls Tom a nerdstein. Joy. Argon has my favourite line of the episode. What is it? Hey, do you guys see a holy capital around here anywhere? I love Argon. <laughs> I can't see it. Where would, you, where would you put a holy capital? Masaru and Thomas start arguing about where they're going. Masaru says that you should always trust a Bancho. In the dub, he but- says that Bancho Leamon never lies, which is a weird statement considering not only did they just met, but Marcus has been flip-flopping between wanting to fight him, loving him, and hating him because they can't get this sort of relationship they have down because they don't understand what a Bancho is. Or, also- or they do understand what a Bancho is, but they're trying to change it for the English dub. Also, the- he kind of did lie. He he deceived them to get them into that training because his actual plan was to get their Digimon hurt. Yes. That was 20 minutes ago. Well, it wasn't so much lying as misleading. And you're right. I think this is the same episode. I mean, it's the same day as the previous episodes, right? Unless it was a really long walk. Well, it's going through the desert of this season, which is a forest apparently because Masaru's dad punched it hard enough. <laughs> it's true. Assuming this is the same area. Yoshino breaks up the fight because it's going to get serious. And the ground shakes and this episode immediately becomes the best episode because we see 12 Airdromon. I counted them, there were 12. I mean, sure. Which if is you're twice a... the number of if my If you're going to be that number. player at Cards Against Humanity. Because Airdromon's the best. I'm never getting over that. Something large is coming. It's a city. But it's Eldoradimon, who, as I mentioned when we were discussing the last episode, I forgot was a Digimon and I forgot even existed. I don't remember anything about this episode when I first watched this season. Well, the good news is it doesn't contribute anything whatsoever i mean it could just be a large city it, it could just yeah. be a bunch of buildings except how when we have the backstory of when they met suguru no it would be exactly the same but the difference is that they would be in the city being thirsty rather than the city itself being thirsty okay okay no i, I see your point i see your point so, and we see Baramon, who has a Mexican accent, I think. I would say Spanish. I thought Mexican. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was uh, changed a little bit. I, I didn't think it was so much like, hey, welcome to my city, I say. It was more of a, uh, it was a bit smoother than that. But I don't know. I, I'm saying it that way because I think they don't do anything but stereotypes. Um, and then Tom has the, the, like, the gumption to be like, I have a bad feeling about this. But and this isn't going to play well for radio. But what's his name? The Spanish guy now? Baramon. Baramon. He does the Grand Vizier pose. Do you know what that is? No. Okay, mate, look at this. It's your hands up together like this. You do a little sneer and you go, hey. you bring your shoulders up. Okay, no, I hey. have seen that It's pose. Jafar. Yes. He does the Jafar pose. Nah. Of the, the face of someone who should not be trusted. And, of, his face is a mask, right? Mm-hmm. Which is not which is not entirely fair, but he does like the whole body language too. And then he does like a big evil laugh while the kids are in earshot. Well, like- and Tom is like, you know... I don't think this is going to go well. Well, he's not evil. Well, he's he's 
going to do bad things to them. Yes, but he's not, I wouldn't say he's evil. No, he's doing bad things for reasonable reasons, I guess. Also, he has a bunch of pixie mom with him. That's that's true. Um, and then there's a new opening and the Royal Knights are there. Yep, and I apparently missed that completely because I was too excited over seeing new evolutions. And also that's my favorite song in Sabres. I didn't like it that much. Honestly. I love this song. It's great. Um, so the Biofrontier kids are being kept in these tanks and Karada's talking to them about how oh, no, sorry, it's like evolve. I just, and... just want to point out another different, a difference that I noticed. Yes. So Masaru and Agumon wonder what kind of feast they'll have and Agumon says, I wonder if it'll be good as good as Sayuri's fried eggs. In the dub, Marcus and Agumon say that every party has a party pooper and that's why they invited Toma. Oh no, it's a whole song. Yeah, it's that's really like annoying. That's the party pooper song. It's really annoying. Um, which I did actually write in there. Uh, so but yeah, yeah, continue. There are these like liquid tanks, and Karada's like, "I can evolve you," but also there's a risk. Like you, there, you know, you might we might damage your personality or your DNA or something about you. But don't worry about it. Yeah, and they're like, "Yeah, okay, evolve us." No, that's not what happened because Koki's like, "I don't care. I want to get revenge," and I was just like, "Actually." I'm actually quite unsure about this, but you'd never hear me say that out loud. You and just said that out Nanami loud. says, You just said that out loud. And Karada says, Well, now that you've all, agree- all agreed with me, <laughs> in the dub, they've actually, they actually fixed this. And he said, Well, I guess I'll just, make- I'll just let Koki speak for everyone then. And he goes, <laughs> so They're not with fixing it. it. It was way funnier the first time. Uh, they literally say, I'm not sure about this. Since you all agree, <laughs> press the button. Um, so they fill with red liquid. Now, they were already filled with liquid, so it's weird they start doing the drowning well, noises. in the dub, they gave them bubbles. Yes. To cover up the bits, especially in an army. It's just, it's also to make it, like, less drowny and less bloody. Mm, I think it's the sense of things. But it's, I guess. I can see that. Yeah. Um, and then my favorite part is that after this entire scene... Cut to the kids being captured. Don't even get your, like, G- was it Gizamon village? Or yeah, the Pugamon village. Pugamon village. You don't even get, like, the, are we tricked or anything? They're just instantly captured. And you know what's really weird? Sorry, uh, sorry you missed on another bit. Sorry. Um, so when, when they're being drowned in the red stuff, Karada says that when they wake up, they'll be stronger. And then in the dub, he says, when, they, when you wake up, we can all have revenge on Masaru, Spencer Diamond's son. <laughs> I know, I just found that weirdly specific. I mean, it is. Why wouldn't he just shoot uh, Masaru with a gun when he had the opportunity? Yeah, why Why would you just squash him with a Gizmon, right? Exactly. Um, which, by the way, we know that Masaru cannot punch because they're too fast. Like, he just doesn't try. How, so here's a question for you. Yeah. Very simple. How does how do you catch Lalamon in a rope? How it okay? It's smaller on the bottom. It doesn't have arms and it floats. So if you if you tie a rope around the bottom part, how is it in any way captured? Yeah, I see your point. It can literally just float out of there. Look, I just feel like Lalamon kind of just went. I guess I'm captured now. It's like when you put a blanket over a Labrador. And they're like, oh, it's dark. I better go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> it must be nighttime. <laughs> I love dogs. They're so dumb. Except for Masaru, who's a good dog. He's like a smart, like a little Jack If you put dog. a blanket over Masaru, he'd say, oh boy, it's nighttime. No, he'd start fighting sleep. it. He would start fighting that blanket. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't come off. He goes, oh, okay, okay, must be nighttime. Yoshina would probably start playing the piano, and Toma would probably say, my mom had a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> So the kids are all tied up and they're like in this sort of like sacrifice King Kong thing that's going to happen. No, you know what exactly what it is? What? It's Attack of the Clones. The Star Wars um, episode two. They have a big Coliseum bit where the characters are all tied to these big pillars and they I'm release I'm not sure if I big... know that movie existed. You've never heard of Star Wars? Not not the, not those, not the... The original, the, the sorry, the um the new trilogy, the the prequels. Oh, is that the, the Rogue One? No. The Rogue One's the only Star Wars prequel, Jay. Ah, I see. You're doing this now. Ah. Okay, let's be real. I haven't actually watched the prequels ever. No, no one ever let me. I always wanted to, but... <laughs> That's fair enough. No they're one not very me. good. Like, I would say, oh, I, I kind of want to watch the Star Wars prequels so I can know if they're, like, I can actually have merit when I say something is bad. And, th- and no one would ever let me. I'll let you watch them. It's like nine. It's like eight or nine hours of that of something you're probably not going to enjoy. I know very there's much. like a razor, but like anyway, we'll, we'll go. On, we'll go on. Yushima shows Sorry? up. There's like a razor who detects the. Looks like a razor. Apparently. I, I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, like the electric. It's the electric razor looking like midi chlorian. Yeah, but continue. With Yushima shows <coughs> up. Okay, so the Baramon is like, oh, by the way, we have another human. We'll execute him at the same time. 
Why did they wait? They didn't know more humans were coming. Okay, this part's for the plot. Masaru didn't make an appointment. Look, dude, this part's complete for the plot. Why did why didn't they tie up Kamimon? Because <laughs> That's a really good question. That's a really good like, question. I honestly thought they were going to explain, like, oh, Kamimon pretended that he was on their side and he was going to obliterate humans. <laughs> no, he just wandered in. <laughs> He's just too quiet. They didn't even notice he was there. He I like, his shell. What would have been really good is if, like, they showed him all tied up and then he just, like, put his arms and legs into his shell and rolled away anyway. Yeah. It would have worked. Yeah, you know, you have a fair point. Um, so they just... They're Cerberimon and they, they do stuff. No, no, but before Cerberimon shows up, so Yoshima's there and he says... you got, Also, I'd like to point out he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, like Vince McMahon when Wait, he's Where sad. did he get this? Where, uh, did, where did he get this? It's in his flashback, though, so presumably he just had it on him in his, like, holiday is, pack. Is there a Hawaiian shirt store on the in the digital world? Probably, actually. Probably, yeah, you're right. But probably. I think that he, like, he probably takes a bag with him. So, or he had, had it underneath. Maybe Kamimon carries it. Oh, he's got a digital shell. In his helmet. Door. Yoshima says it's pathetic that they got captured, and Masaru says, who's the most pathetic one here? In the dub, the word is weak, and also somehow Thomas sees Yoshima before he comes up, and he says, so that's where he went. So he saw the big bald head, and he's like, oh. Um, and then the weirdest thing, I think it's now, and the chief goes, so dad's not doing so good, huh? Yeah. And they all literally go... How do you know that? Which is a fair oh, point. I um I heard rumors and stuff and I guess it sounded about right. That's a weird thing for him to say. Everything was going kind of fine last... No, was it going fine? He was around for Kurata's nonsense at the end, was it? No, he wasn't. He, he didn't He didn't know any of Kurata's nonsense. The last time he was around was when they first escaped. Yes. Mercurimon. He would not have heard anything about that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He's been there the whole time. He's just lying. Yeah, he's been, he was like, so Marukimon, he, he bad guy now? No, apparently he was totally fine. So Saburamon so comes out and he's going to attack them and kill them. Oh, sorry, do, I forgot yeah. to mention one more thing. So they say the reason they're going to punish the kids here, or the humans, right, is because humans going to the holy city is illegal. Yes. Shouldn't Bancho Leomon have warned them about that? Yes, Probably. He's an idiot. Or maybe they just ha- he just has this rule now after the Gizmon have attacked recently. Maybe this is a more recent rule that Bancho Leomon didn't know about. Um, maybe. Maybe. But how recent could it be? They captured the, the chief a while ago. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that, that, that is reasonable. <laughs> maybe they just captured him just like a day ago. Maybe they caught him today. It's been a long day, apparently. It's been a really long day. <laughs> Baramon says it's impossible for humans and Digimon to be friends, and that the hearts of those who've been hurt by what the humans have done will never be persuaded otherwise, and that they should just become their allies and fight the humans or else they'll be executed. And this is where Kamamon shows up. How do you capture an Agumon in rope as well? He can light them on fire. Galmon also have seen that can spin around and cut things, so like to none fa- of them can be there. And to be fair, at least you could stop his original m- momentum from like spinning. Look, maybe but we can just Agumon's agree just on got that fire. these Digimon aren't that smart, and the only smart one who was able to escape these terrible ropes was Kamimon? Yeah, I guess so. Everyone else was kind of just like, not an issue. I don't know. He cut it with one of his head CDs. Then the dub has something that I found that's weird. Thomas calls Yoshino Yoshino and not Yoshi. Because her name's not Yoshino in the dub. It is now. It's Yoshi. It's like how if we called <laughs> Davis D- Daisuke or... Hey, Daisuke, who's that? That's like the, one of the abridged jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is an abridged joke. TK's going around calling people by their... Uh... No, it wasn't TK. Was it Izzy? It was TK. No, it was TK going around like, all right. But to be fair, in Digimon Adventure, those were their names, actually. We got... It said in the first episode, oh, these are their names, but TK is like his, his like, nickname. No, but he goes up to... Um, oh, fuck. What's Izzy's? Koshiro. He goes, is it, okay, Koshiro. He's like, who's Koshiro? No, but he, that's actually his name in the in the original ver- the original English version of Digimon Adventure. Is it? Yes. What? We see in this first episode, we get their full names and they all have their full names. But and they have them in like their names that they got called in the dub in like talking marks to show us the nickname. I have no memory of that. I have a memory of I it. I have no memory of that. Then we have Saburamon being going after Yoshino. And then once they get free, because the Digimon partners help them, thanks to Kamimon, Masaru goes to punch Saburamon but misses. And then he goes after Yoshino. And she says that he can't, that he, he can't get away with what he did earlier, which was nothing. In the dub, Yoshi says, You scared me once, but I'm over it. She takes off her jacket. Does she have a character moment? Is that what we're trying to establish? I guess. But she, she like she takes off her jacket and distracts it, and then Masaru can punch him. Oh, yeah. She bullfights the three-headed dog. That was pretty cool. No, but that doesn't make any sense. 
First of all, it's not a bull. Second, her jacket's not red. And third, if its middle head is going after the jacket, one of the heads on the side will still bite her arm off. Yes. Every part of this plan didn't make sense and should have failed. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to disagree with you because I think you're right sometimes. Sometimes. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate the charity. Then when he goes to punch the Suburban, he's going to, evo- he's going to evolve his Digimon and Baramon says stop because he recognizes the Digisoul. So, so another quick question. Yes. Why do they think humans are all evil when they clearly idolize Suguru? I don't know. I feel like they just assumed that all humans are evil except for Suguru and he was like this outlier and all the other humans are evil except for Suguru and that's why as soon as something reminds them of Suguru, they sort of snap out of it and remember that not humans are evil. But because the majority of humans are evil and the ones that even if they're a vocal minority in this case, they are killing Digimon, so they seem the dangerous part of the human world. That's a long paragraph to say, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Well, a lot of what I say in this podcast is <laughs> a long way of saying I don't know. But you can sort of... I, I, I'm sort of saying something at the very least. Yeah, and so they go into the punching the oasis into the floor of Which the desert. Which makes no sense. Like, come on, a desert is dry and he just punches it so hard it just erupts into water. Also, that's just not how sand works. When you punch sand, it compresses and becomes way harder. It doesn't break. He would have to have smashed, like, the tectonic plate. Yeah. So now there's like, oh, yeah, well, come have a banquet now. We definitely didn't just try to kill you. Just come hang out. It's fine. So, no, this is when the chief says, oh, yeah, Dats is gone, isn't it? I've just, I've heard rumors from someone. I don't know. It's fine. And Tom looks really upset during this time. Yoshima explains how Kamimon and him went to look for Suguru to prevent the world, the war between Digimon. In the dub, they were just looking for Spencer. Kamimon speaks and Yoshino points it out. In the dub, Yoshi says that she forgot that he could talk, despite never hearing him talk before. Kamimon goes in his shell because he's embarrassed and it's really cute. He doesn't have the voice I wanted him to have. He's well, like he a talks like this. Was... It's cute. That's what I wanted. He talks like that. Oh, you know what? It might be. No. The Japanese, I think. In the dub, he sounds... He's, he's like... In the dub, is right. He's like, I am Kamimon. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of what I wanted to eat the I mean, he, he spoke when he evolved. Oh, yeah. That's lame. Guapamon has a different voice, so he's like, Guapamon. Look at that Because he's, he's all fun. He loses his shell and gets confident. Guapo. It's like uh, Izumi, how you just have to be make more friends if you are worried about not having friends or just don't like hanging out with people. Just make more friends. So they're talking about Suguru and how he's the Messiah. Yes. Which is strong language. And the dub calls him a legend instead. That's, you know what? That's probably more fair. That's better use of language. M- messianic language is like absurd. In, I guess in the same way that Yggdrasil is God. Mm-hmm. This isn't like a weird Bible story, is it? Well, is it that actually what this is? I don't know, actually. <laughs> I mean, I never thought about it. Is it possible that Suguru dies and then comes back three days later? Well, isn't that like Leomon in every season of Digimon, Jay? No, he doesn't come back to life. He often just he did, dies. He did an adventure. Yes, but that wasn't three days. I don't know. That was like five years. Good point. It was, look, it was three days for the humans. No, it wasn't. Yes, because they were in the real world for three days or for two days and then they came back. But did Leomon die a second time? He died at the start of, he died at the start of adventure. I thought he got mind controlled at the start no, of adventure. No, he was murdered by Devimon. No, he got mind controlled. We, we have this conversation like once he a month. He kills Ogamon. No, and he kills D- Le- Leomon too and that's why the surprise to see him, I'm pretty sure. No, because he, he's fine later. But Ogamon comes back. Yes, he does. Okay, Ogamon is the messiah. Oh. Gamon, yes. Can we can we move on now? Yes, we can move on. <laughs> so when they're wondering what Messiah is, Masaru isn't sure, and Yoshino says it means he's stronger than a Bancho. In the dub, Yoshi says that a legend means he's more famous than Marcus, and Ogamon says, "I guess we're all more." Famous except for you, Marcus. And Marcus laughs like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. But in the original, he's laughing because he's so proud of his father. And in the dub, it's more of like, no, I'm the best. And it's this weird sort of change between Marcus being this precious thing who's just like, my dad is so great to I'm so great. It's this weird change. I just, mm. It seems like it's almost changing his character from this precious, like, my dad is the best and I'm so proud that he's my dad and also Bancho's are great to... It, this line directing directly referring to Marcus and his own appearance of his worth. Like it's it and in fact it even says like stronger than a bancho. So Which is a big deal. Yes. So this line does not refer to Marcus at all. At all, right? In Isn't the original. A bancho just the punk? No, it's like a, a boss. Is it? Yes. Like a boss of the, the yuckers, I think. Okay. Well, this, the translator's note in that episode explained it. Ooh. Anyway, so this line in the original is, as I just said, means he's stronger than a Bancho. Sure. And the dub, more famous than Marcus. Which is just a denigrating thing. And also, Lalamon is not more famous than Marcus. 
Oh, I like Lalamon. Yeah, but people know who Marcus is. Yeah, no, you have a point. Tomo looks upset and stands up and leaves. And then he says to Garmon how he's envious. In the dub, Garmon really sort of points out that he's jealous. I wish I had a famous dad who wasn't in my life for 10 years. Oh, I do have one of those. It's Gaben. So is his dad dead? Because, like, he can't be jealous about not about Masaru having a dad. I swear his dad shows up, but I could be wrong. Because Masaru, his dad has been missing for 10 years. Yes. So if anything, he should sympathize, not be jealous. Yes. I What's don't know happening either. here? I don't know either. But I guess we'll find out. Some Gizmon show up and kill some Piximon. Lalam, Lalamon and Garmon evolve. And then Masaru has to run up a vine to punch a Gizmon, which, which is, this is great. Because I love the fact that they are still sticking to the Marcus, oops, Masaru has to punch the opponent for him to get Digisol out and they're not ditching this they're saying well this is something that always has to happen that's true and it's really cool but at, at some point it stops being like a fun thing and starts being routine where you have to start asking okay now do something creative to get to the I'm punch I'm sorry he ran up one of Rosemond's vines to punch a Gizmon that is creative sometimes just like I have to jump up in the air and punch him sometimes, okay I agree with you sometimes it is very generic of like he Masaru runs he jumps he lands a punch then like like during the during the same fall, he scans his digi soul, and that that's that's very routine, and that's what's in the episodes. But I will not take that what we just had just then is in any way not creative because he runs up Rosemond's vine that she has just used to grab a Gizmon, runs up this vine and punches a Gizmon. That is great. That is imaginative. I know that the majority of the time lately it's been Masaru jumps in the air and punches, and sometimes he misses the first punch and then he gets the second punch in. And that's that. Yeah, but this one this one was good. This one was creative, and I'm fine with that. I want them to come up with more creative ways of activating his Digi Soul. It's great. So the Ultimates easily destroy the Gizmon, but we find out that this was a diversion. Then Falcomon and Ikudo show up, and he brought a horde of Igamon. Yay. You know what's going to be a problem? When they make um, G- uh, Gizmon Vista. Does no one remember Windows Vista anymore? No, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Does no one remember Windows Me? Remember Windows 9? <laughs> Yeah. 8, 8.1. I remember I remember writing what I thought was quite a funny joke about that, actually. So, in the dub, Igamon is called Ninjamon. And, of course, we know Igamon because he's in V-Tamer. There's lots of them. Yeah, well, now there's lots of them, but there's only one in V-Tamer. And, like, it just makes me want to not be watching this and watching an animation of V-Tamer instead. Imagine the, the hijinks of Gabo and... Gabo! It'd be great. They defeat Gizmon because there's lots of them. And Akudo says that Mercurymon says that the true power of friendship was the strongest power. Boo! Look, this is cute. Boo. Like, he took it from, like, what we need. We need friends. I love that. Boo. The thing is, in the dub, they could have, like, they missed a chance to add in a line of saying something like, that's why Banchaliamon was talking about friends so much. <laughs> that would be really good. Just- also, I feel like they just got wanted to get rid of Akuto for that episode, just so they could maybe have his own evolution episode, or potentially not give him an evolution. It's just, it's just not give him one at all. Yeah, it's it's one or the other, right? I I guess. What do you think it's going to be? Do you think he's going to get an evolution? There or? really was no reason for him to be not there, was there? If, unless they didn't want to give him an there, evolution. There will be one, for sure. But I don't know. Well, he, did, did you watch the intro? Apparently, apparently. No, I don't remember seeing that bit. He saw the Royal Knights, but not anything else. No. I don't. The Royal Knights stood out okay. <laughs> Oh, it's those guys who ruin everything they See, touch. I didn't even remember them being there, and now I feel bad. So we find out that this is the Igamon clan, and they give Ikuto the suffix Dono, which is pretty old. And I remember this being used in Ru- Ruroni Kenshin. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. So the idea of the X clan is to subdivide the different clans into different groups, right? Yep. Igamon is both the name of the Digimon and the name of the clan. Mm-hmm. Which is the equivalent, by the way, of it being of a big group of ninjas being called the human clan. Yep. What are your other options? Maybe the different species of Digimon, each different have a, a different clan. Like there's a Palmon clan of the Palmon ones. I don't know. Do you think there are lots of Palmon ninjas around? I was trying to come up with something there, but it didn't quite work out for me. It's Shurimon. You should have gone with Shurimon. Yeah, she's the one from ARMS. He, she, she, yes, she? Yes. Shurimon's a boy. Because no. Hawkmon's a boy. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. Allegedly. There there we are. Yes, I'm definitely not a boy. Masaru is impressed and shakes Akuto's hand as we get this sort of artistic moment. Should have had a Digisol when that happened. Yoshima and Kamimon are looking at the tank of, the, of data. And then we see Karada is at the tank again and is feeding the data into it. 
And then the biohybrids wake up and Karata says good morning in English. In the dub, we get some more smoke to censor the naked people. I appreciate that he speaks in English. I know that like it's a weird thing. It makes I, him seem wacky. I, yeah, and I don't think it I don't think it tells you anything about his character actually because because I really feel like it's sort of what it's trying to do. Mm-hmm. But I like it. It, it. As I said, it makes him feel wacky. I don't know. He's also he's also not bad at it. Like, there's the, the character who speaks English in Clan Ad that one time on TV, and everyone goes, oh my god, her English is so good, and she's speaking at the UN, and I'm like, I can't understand a single thing she is saying. Well, please tell mum, Amy, I'm going to the summer memory. <laughs> you said that way too slow, so it was actually kind of sensical. Please tell mum, Amy, I'm going to summer memory. <laughs> it's just Tommy was so acting. Mum, I'm sick of this, uh, this mum, Amy, I'm going to the summer memory. Karada finds that a lot of Gizmon were just being destroyed. And then he gets a visual of El Doradimon somehow and says that if he kills El Doradimon, his ambitions will nearly be achieved. And then he says this is the last battle. In the dub, he says that this is where the Sacred City was hiding the whole time. And then he says how he wants to attack all the Digimon who are hiding there. And then he needs that power. Hey, May, how long would you say this Digimon genocide has been going for? Um, well, obviously 10 years. Well, I mean... On and off, because I feel like he wasn't in the digital world the whole time. I feel like there was a break between the original Digimon Genocide and, like, the the current Digimon Genocide. Okay, well, there wasn't one before. There was one battle that lasted an hour, and then he got run off by Mercurymon, right? Yeah. So, this being the big Digimon Genocide, how long do you think it's been going for? Two days? Maybe. So, how, after only two days, are they on the final battle? Does he think there were, like, 100 Digimon alive? At least it's night time now. Oh, yeah. At least we know that they'll go to sleep, probably. <laughs> this is the longest day, I think, in in all of Digimon. Like, in the, in the sense of, like, the most stuff happens without time travel. What do you think of this episode as someone who was new to Digimon? I didn't like it. Yeah, I, w- I wasn't wrapped with it either. I just like, it, w- it wasn't terrible, like, don't get me wrong, but it was just like, we've had better previous episodes. Why did you rate it? Four? I gave it a 6.5. It was better than the last Generous. episode. But I guess, I guess maybe since I downed the last episode, I'll down this episode to a six. I don't know, I just, I feel like it could be better and I feel like Savers deserves to be better and it can be better than this and it can be more enjoyable than this and I shouldn't just give every episode, like, a higher score because I know slash hope it will be better than this. So I press on, votes against the current. How did this episode compare to your predictions in Doctor Synopsis? I thought they would capture Master individually. I don't understand why the title of the show... He's a main character. ...implied that he was captured separately. Look, I feel like this season does a job of, like, trying to make each character, like, important, but I still feel like Masaru is, like, the clear main character. Sorry, you think they made Yoshi at all important in any way? They gave her an evolution. Yes. Look, she's more important than Izumi in Frontier. I mean, sure, but that's a really low bar. I like her more than Mako, but it's just sad because I really liked Mako before, yes, before Chapter yeah. 5. Before you realised. Um, Look, I liked, I liked Mako before the show started telling me how I should like Mako. Exactly. And Toma is just as just as useless now. In fact, he's, he's more annoying because he's meant to be so useful. Because mm. we know he has all these skills that he just never uses. He uses boxing. The quick question here is, if the only characters in the digital world right now were Masaru and Ikuto, would the story be any different? The answer is no. Right. Seriously, Toma and um, Yoshi do nothing. And it would be an actually more compelling story because the Bio Frontier kids outnumbering Masaru would actually make those fights interesting yeah. and make more sense without being like, ooh, power levels, that's the difference, right? No, you know, he's they're out, he's outnumbered, so of course he's going to lose initially. Right, right. No, no, I see I see your point. What was the major difference that you noticed? I, I don't have that many. I'm leaning heavily on the difference between Legend and Messiah. Messiah is such a specific thing. See, my main difference was difference was in that was in that same scene and it was how they relate Messiah or Legend to to stronger than a band show, but in the dub, it's better than Marcus, which just seems weird. Like, this line more isn't about Marcus. famous even. Not even good. It's just yeah, more Yeah, it's, it's not meant to be about Marcus, and I just felt like there was this weird sort of line again about it. Mm. So what do you think about the removal of an evolution arc and instead giving everyone their evolution the same episode? Because I know you've previously mentioned how you're not a fan of the evolution arc and you hate them and you just want them to be done with. Do you prefer the, this way? No. Well, how, because... how do you think they should achieve evolution? Um, I think you can do evolution arcs well, I guess. Or alternatively, the, I think the I think the problem I have is that evolution arcs are completely formulaic. So, like, just do your story, right? And don't spend a filler episode evolving. 
Um, all shonen anime does powering up better than this. Okay, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. Uh, it, ha- it has been done in, in quite well in Digimon before. The three evolutions to perfect that were first time evolutions in the real the real slash human world arc of Digimon Adventure where we had flower power she evolved in that episode because she was fighting Dark Tyranimon because that was attacking the city and then she was fighting Vamdemon and then we had Zudamon who Joe and Takaru were riding over to get to a diver because they were stuck behind in mainland Tokyo you know what I guess I like that one because it's not linked to um we need you to evolve necessarily that's linked to you proved yourself worthy of this crest which is yes. a an external story beat which is really interesting like i want to i want to say i want to make a comparison to danganronpa but i just realized if you talk about danganronpa in any sort of detail it's spoilers even oh, no yes. matter how minor yeah, let's not do things, that yeah. but basically the idea of you know something is coming but you're fascinated to know how they will do it evolution episodes aren't like that right because you know they're coming but you know how they'll do it too they will lose the fight until they evolve and win. That's how it goes. Whereas... Like the first chunk of adventure where it was just like, the Digi- the Digidestined go to a new village. The village is under attack by this Digimon, who's usually a very nice Digimon, but this time he's got a black gear. And then they're fighting, and for some reason they get separated. And the main... Ca- the the focus of the episode is separated from the rest of the group. The thoughts and of then, Merimon never ends. And they're fighting... Uh, well, we had Greymon evolution, then we had Garurumon evolution, which was slightly different. No, I meant with the the friendly Digimon that is actually is evil right yes, now. Yes, because Shellmon and Seedramon were just were just like monsters. They were just dicks. They were just monsters. And then Merimon was actually quite smart, and Andromon was quite smart, and Unimon was quite smart. But th- yeah, so it sort of sort of was like, oh, they go to a new place, they lose, they get separated, and they're still losing, and then you know, evolution happens. And, and then, then they have the upgrade bonus. But then I think the crest actually improved that and each crest seemed to be actually important to the actual story arc and wasn't just Monster of the Week episode. I mean, Metal, Metal Greymon was in the Etamon dis- being destroyed episode. Patamon evolved to perfect against Piedmon and defeated Piedmon. See, that's a, that's a good thing as well. That's something that you get from V-Tamer, which is important here. If you're going to do the big evolution, it, it, it hurts the show that there are a bajillion of them. And it, it's a lot better when you can use them sparingly and at important moments. Yes. And I think that what Vietnam has done really impressively is that it has spread evolution out a long way. He's evolved, what, once? But it was awesome. You can do evolutions well. Um, it, yeah, he has it, only evolved once, hasn't he? Yeah. He evolved from Vedramon to Aero Vedramon. He's powered up since and, every, and other stuff. Yeah, but, but he's powered up without evolution. Yeah. I don't know. I, honestly, I think the show could have just done with, not necessarily without evolutions at all, but really restrain, restraining themselves would have been really nice. Mm. Just like, how does Argumon fight battles. Well, you've got yourself going around punching and stuff, so actually come up with stuff. But no, they're they're not. It's just, okay. Well, I guess things have ramped up. We'll have an evolution episode. Yeah, and this episode, the evolution episode, did seem like it was a forced evolution. Like it wasn't forced, as in the characters didn't force it. But I feel like the writers forced it. I don't know. It just didn't feel right. It fell out of nowhere. It didn't even like you knew it was coming because they started to lose, and mm. that's the Digimon sign for okay, evolution is now coming. Not oh, the kids have to learn something it was never shown in atmon though what? it was never obvious in atmon they just were like i guess i guess we have this chip now i'm gonna use this chip oh new evolution huh yeah I, that was something i think i really appreciated in the early atmon stuff which was i will use a chip to upgrade you it doesn't evolve you it just does a bit of a little boost with a cool little ability change mm. But so you didn't know when it was going to happen each mm. time. Yeah, and you had to defeat somebody to sort of earn the right to use them and evolve later. Yeah. And you could evolve wrong, which they don't do very often. Yes. And I, I always do love the wrong evolutions. And also, we also have Tamers where the evolution episodes were about the relationships between the kids and the the Digimon. And while those also sort of followed the side, we have to get this evolution out of the way, let's introduce the Monster of the Week, I feel like it, for the most part, was like that. It, well, they did it twice with, um... Oh, it felt like they did it twice with Renamon, like, yeah, really no, quickly. But, but those were just character episodes, not evolution episodes, necessarily. One of them was. Yeah, one of them was, but when we, then we had the exact same episode. <laughs> But it was it was still good though. But but the thing is, I think we we mentioned this at the time. One was Renamon's growth, and the other one was Ruki's growth. It was. Growth. It turns out. And we don't, haven't had that with any other Digimon series. Yes. We haven't had the growth of the partner as well as the growth of the, the, the human. Because Renamon's well. an actual person. Yeah, and I like that. I like that in Tamers how we get the growth from 
from the Digimon as well as the growth from the human. And like we, we sort of got like growth from the D- Atmon in Atmon. So, more or less. Like, I, I don't think they ever really developed particularly. I think Renamon still has more of a character than a lot of the Digimon characters, though. Probably. Digimon and Atmon characters. But back to Sabres, it's just like, I don't know, this episode felt like they looked at the, the time and they were like, we have to evolve them in this episode. How do we do it? Help. And they just... <laughs> They literally just wrote something together and just said, I hope that'll do. Because it, it just felt like and that. And it didn't. And I hate saying, that, like, oh, but they just they just were out of ideas. But it just it felt like that. This episode just felt like they wanted to come up with a reason to get them all to evolve, but didn't want to think about it too hard. John, if you feel that way, then well, it must be really bad. Look, sometimes I just feel like a good way to evolve is just, like, you're losing, and then the partner just shouts, don't give up, and that triggers an evolution. <laughs> Gilmon, I'm your friend. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. I mean, it still was fine. It wasn't. It wasn't terrible, and I still feel like it was better than a lot of the episodes that we saw in Frontier, right? I look. It's everything is better than Frontier. They're on different scales. Look, the evolution arcs in Frontier were the most formulaic because literally they go to a new town and they find an object every time. And Ooh, that's I how found it this went. one in a hole in the ground that I was at by accident. And my detector didn't detect it because it's not even like it's called a detector because it was because it had metal in the way. Probably I don't know. But sometimes stone also stops it, but then sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, it's it's funny that way. Stone and metal, eh. Funny is a strong word. The screenshot of the week this week, I had to choose uh, the 12 Edramon. I chose Rosemond's ass. Yeah, well, you do get a focus on that. Like, it is quite focused. It's right up there. It takes the whole screen. And thankfully the dub does edit it out, because I guess booty thankfully is too much. Thankfully it's a strong word. There was some Digimon introduced this week, Jay. Shine Greymon. Oh, I thought it looked so stupid. I I love him. He's a friend. Let's rip off Digimon in Digimon. Rosemon? That's not new. Don't don't lie to You're me. You're right. Rosemon's not new. <laughs> don't lie to me. Rosemon's not new. We could do all the Royal Knights. Uh, what about Mirage Galgamon? I remember it being really cool, actually. Like, it looks surprisingly good. It looks good. like an Anubis. It looks like a Royal Knight. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, you're right, you're right. It is a bit, uh, real nighty. What about Eldoradimon, who I forgot existed? Um, I honestly thought he was gonna be the Divine Beast when I first saw him. I'm like, where is other heads? Oh, you mean, like, Ebon Wumon? Yes. Yeah, no, I can see that. He does look like he's friends with him. He would, they're cousins. Just oh. one grew a city instead of a forest. What if we just have the Holy Beast and the, and the Royal Knights duke it out again? Yeah, and Yggdrasil will come in and talk and, and fight Genai. Don't know why I said again, that's never happened before. <laughs> Genai shows up, yeah. He's, he's one of the Royal Knights. On to Postmon Pat, and we'll start off, as always, with our weekly poll. This week, the question was, which is a biohybrid? Jay will read out the replies that we got, and then I will read out the results. All right, the first one we got said, uh, from Hiro Alato says, I'm mostly voting for Koki for future reasons. Fair enough. Holy Angel says, they voted for Nanami out of gay girl bias. Yeah, me too, to Strong. be fair. Chuck one says that they voted for Koki for the same reason as Holly Angel. Just switch girl to guy. <laughs> They're all awful stereotypes with terrible designs, but Koki gets uh, half a point for being generic shonen hot. Well, yeah, I can I can see that. Black hair would have been better though. Yeah, but if he's blonde, he gets to be evil. He gets to be Bakugo. Uh, oh boy, he really just is he's Bakugo, just Bakugo, Bakugo, isn't he? He's just Bakugo. I saw a really funny um, discussion of Bakugo, which is... Bakugo is just Naruto, but starting at a higher power level and more arrogant. He's, and then he's the same character. He's better than Naruto. Sorry, he's Boruto's dad. Oh my gosh. Uh, we got one from Autumn who says, Ivan's face and overall stature remind me somewhat of Bato from Ghost in the Shell manga, which is to say that they're getting a lot of teddy bear vibes from him. It's just a shame about the strange gimmick though. Perhaps there could have been some other way for his inner thoughts to be broadcast to his opponents, like having a diary with really poorly bound pages that's a funny bit i like that that way uh, he'd have the opportunity to show more embarrassment and maybe even awkwardly apologize from time to time alas the curse of being a filler mini boss character your true appeal lies in coming up with ideas about how you could have could be improved so what was your who's your favorite jay because I, d- I didn't vote in this poll either i, I know my Koki, answer because he's kooky i like nanami i actually because... no i actually do like ivan i think his bit's funny all right so not including our our replies, we got 19 votes. Ivan came last with five votes. Nanami was second with six votes, and Koki won with eight votes. I like Nanami. She she's cool. I want to be friends with her. I mean, you're allowed, but you're wrong. I want to hang out with her. She's not as cool as the girl whose name I forget from Vtaper. Mari. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
M- Murray's great. Though I think Sigma is my favourite Yeah, he's got, the, he's got the good one. Or Hideto. <laughs> you Actually, they're all great. They're all great. I just love the, I love the Alias 3 so much. I know. It's just a lot better than this. Man, how much time do we spend talking about how V-Tamer and Atmon are better than Digimon and... Because well, Digimon's pe- bad. People don't consider Atmon Digimon and people don't count v as part of the franchise because it was, but it's ne- the it, best it was only in Jap- Japanese. You will- I, actually, it was, I think it was released in Italian, actually. The series will be better off overall if you accept that as part of Digimon. Both Atmon and v So we got a Gmail from Andrew who says, Let me try my hand at defending the movie that everyone seems to hate. Hurricane Touchdown. Mm, here we go. All right. After the standout su- success of our war game, Toei wanted another hit for Digimon franchise. Mamoru, uh, Mamoru, Mamoru Hosoda, Hosoda um, wasn't keen on doing another franchise film so soon after his last one. Toei instead approached Shigeyasu Yamauchi, uh, another Toei director who had actually served as Hosoda's mentor of sorts. Yamauchi, as a director, has a fairly distinct aesthetic and cinematic style that tends to put focus on tone and atmosphere, sometimes at the expense of the story. And amazingly, Toei essentially let Yamauchi do whatever the hell he wanted with the Digimon movie. Um, say what you will about Hurricane Touchdown, but it knew exactly what tone it was going for. Otherworldly, disorienting, and oppressively empty. A lot of fans, yourselves included, have described the film as some sort of bizarre fever dream, and it's safe to say that that was intentional. I think that's how I described it, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. There is something incredibly unique about the experience he creates. Think about it in relation to other Digimon stories. The stakes are fairly small and personal, uh, as the film is largely about Wallace trying to bring his deranged friend back to his senses. Even the subplot about the older Chosen being kidnapped is largely forgotten halfway through. It's resolved off-screen and summed up in one line by Daisuke at the end of the movie, and is really only there to give the Zero Two kids a reason to be involved. I feel like it's actually the Zero Two kids dragging the film down, not Wallace and his Digimon. The movie is far from my favorite Digimon movie. It's so disinterested in its own plot that it stops writing it once the third act starts, and the movie revolves around a character we're not given much information about. But I'd still argue that it's a far better film artistically and thematically than Di- Diaboramon Strikes Back, a lazy rehash of our war game that involves none of the people who made our war game um, work, uh, which places too much focus on Taichi and Yamato when it should have been on the Zero Two Kids and also suffers from the rushed ending and a runtime that's far too short. And the music in Hurricane Touchdown is straight garbage, though. I'll give you that. I, I want to just go back over this because I understand this was a defense of Hurricane Touchdown that, as far as I'm aware, boiled down to, but they got an interesting director who did his own thing. Yes. Because even in the midst of the defense, it was, yeah, well, the plot was, the plot and the music was trash. So the only thing left over is visual aesthetic. And I mean, I would agree with that. I th- feel like if any- if Hurricane Touchdown has anything going for it, it is most certainly the visual aesthetic. And That's- the fact that it's it feels like a fever dream actually makes it kind of intriguing to watch. Oh, it's really boring. I think that's the problem, is that you can say it did what it was intended to do, right? See, it was intended to make you feel a certain way, and it accomplished that. Well, the thing that is, does make it good. Jay, when I was younger, I was always like, oh, the original version is so much better, because in the original version, they had the kids being spirited away by the demons, and they had, like, this extra thing about how they were being, like, taken, they were being re- rewound time, and you know, the Original Digidestin were gone, and then I thought about it. And English I'm like, is better because it's shorter, English right? English dub is actually better because it just shortens it, and it makes a part of an actual... Look, people always say the Digimon movie is bad. I don't think that at all. The Digimon movie, movie is fine. Yes, they change a lot, and yes, they have two Mimi love Joe on Mimi's door instead of the family portrait, and I'm still not over that. The family nameplate. And I'm just... Babies, babies, babies. That was in uh, movie four, Dear Boromon Strikes Back, was it? Okay. which was actually movie two in the dub. Uh, yes. Uh, and plus, I mean, our war game is probably the best part of that movie. But the prequel's not that bad. And you know what? Hurricane Touchdown, when it's shortened, isn't that bad. It's pretty bad. It's better when it's 20 minutes long instead of 40. That's really true. 40 or 50 or however long it was. So I just want to I just want to reiterate the idea that something doing what it was meant to do does not make it good. And something make, like, making you feel a certain way, that can be... Some people can enjoy that. Yes. But objectively 
it's probably still not good. I, I'm, I, I, just, I don't feel particularly convinced because, but then again, I will admit, I like to focus on the plot of a show. I think the plot's very important, which is why I'm falling off savers because the plot's fall into trash garbage that's sad and is it still making me feel like yeah he punched a digimon sure it is and that's what it's intending to do but i'm interested in the story of a show which is why westworld was great and this show is boring and the movie was really trash because it didn't care you could tell it didn't care yeah Uh, that's my uh response to the defense uh and my request for further and better particulars um, we got one on With The Will from Chakmon who says, A few comments on this set of episodes. One, what the hell were Mickey and Megumi wearing after they escaped the exploding dad's building? Racing yeah. uniforms? Yeah, I don't know either. Two, Mickey is Mickey in the dub. I, I wow. Never, I never got that. It's Mickey as in M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. Mickey Megumi. Mickey Megumi. Uh... Three, it's bioevolution is stupid. I guess the writing team is still clinging to hope for a successful implementation of the kids turning into Digimon idea. Hey, look, I think I think Tamers did it fine. Further, it's a bad idea. As much as I like Frontier, I would have I would like to have seen the kids with real Digimon partners instead of the legendary Digimon world we got. Um, the stupid bio canister that Jay pointed out with bio Stegamon's design. Yeah, that's actually in all three of the designs. All are really bad. Fantastic. Um, number five. What's up with Koki's obsession with talking about writing an autobiography? More fun Japanese landmarks um, worth mentioning talking about for the jet-setting world traveler Digimon fan to visit. I think these might be separate bits. Um, I, I really want to... Like, every time I see a Japanese geographical landmark in Digimon, I just want to go back to Japan because it was just so... It was so fun going to Digimon places in Japan and Jay even didn't mind going to Shinjuku. I minded going to Odaiba. It was really boring. It turns out it's just a residential district and there's nothing to do. There's, shop- there's good shopping there, apparently. We didn't find it. You didn't want to go shopping. so I was That's like, okay. right, I was dying. It was really muggy. And then you went to Nakon- um, Nakona Broadway. That was great. That, that was great. Because uh, it was, it, guess what? T- it turns out if you put like thirty-five m- mandarake shops in one building, there's gonna be one place you like. And we bought some cool stuff, and it was great. And then we got a uh, KFC for dinner because I dragged Jay across Japan. Well, across Tokyo, more like. I also almost took him to uh, Hikari Gaoka, but like I think Jay would li- would have left me. I think so. Because what's the point? There's an apartment building. It's like an hour and a half, and. They, okay, they have a sign that has a, like a the Digimon logo on it, and really? they have a, they have a map. Yes, they have a tribute I'm to it. I'm shocked that that exists. Yes, it is very old and faded though. Like it's it's faded a bit because they've had it up there for a while. That's adorable. But it says it right outside, like the, the, I think it's pop up, like the the place where they're they're meant to live, like the apartment yeah. block, and they have it outside. That I'm hoping little, like, the thing. residents are constantly asking to get it taken down, and they can't figure out how to like contact the trust. All these westerners <laughs> keep on showing up. It's like a two hour train drive. Yeah, there's one westerner every six months she won't leave us alone this is me yes i want i, I want to go there one day but like i feel like it must be something that i do without jay because i don't think jay it's a very long train ride and i just felt like it was such a big journey considering we were going to a dive on and nakano broadway yeah it would have been it would have been a bit of because that's that's an expensive trip yes all things considered Look, i think i went to nakano broadway at the in, in lieu of going to hikari Goku definitely that day. a better oh, choice much better much better not, there's a sweet my kfc there not for my wallet i bought a gargomon figure fair enough which i took to shinjuku with me and it was great for photos so uh they chuck one goes on to say they really like savers takes place in yokohama it's nice to have some real landmarks from places other than Tokyo from time to time. And while Falcomon and Ikuto were waiting at the park, uh, on the park bench for the rest of the kids to rescue the Noguchis in episode 27, we caught a glimpse of a Ferris wheel with a big digital clock on its hub, uh, which is the Cosmo Clock 21 in, Min- in at Minato Mirai 21. And their concern is that it read 11.57 at night and Ikuto's just hanging out on a park bench. He's 10 and he should be in bed. He's not a, he's not a human though, he's a Digimon. No, he is a human. That's his whole point. He's a human. He is the heart of a Digimon. Ah, right. Yes, of course. But just because you got a heart transplant from a 57-year-old doesn't make you 57. Okay, good point. Um, there was another scene in episode 27 where Repamon uh, breaks up the car chase. There's a set of buildings uh, there with a sky bridge connecting them. Can't place it as a landmark. We also seem to get a fair number of shots of what looks like the Intercontinental Yokohama Grand Hotel, which uh, with its curved shape on the one side. Anyway, fun Japan geography. Yay! We got a YouTube comment from Eitaro, who says, Kudamon is actually a fox. Uh, a type of Japanese uh, mythical creature known as a kuda, kuda kitsune, uh, kudagitsune, 
or a pipe fox. But death ferret sounds cooler. Yeah, it does, because he's a death ferret. And on Tumblr, we got one from Ellie Vorg, who says, I agree that Akuto's dad is being a lot more surprisingly reasonable this time uh, than he was in episode 20. But Ikuto's mom is consistent. Last time she was happy because she got to see her son again. This time she's distraught because she's sending him back into danger, which is quite a different scenario uh, that is consistent with the fact that she became horribly depressed when she lost him the first time. Episode 27 28 do not necessarily have to take place during the same day. There's no telling how much wandering through the forest looking for Draymon uh, they could have skipped between the two episodes because nothing eventful happened for most of it. They're bewildered as to why the dub went to the friends route with Bancho Leamon. Hey, don't worry, they backed it off. Um, it wouldn't have been difficult for them to quickly establish that the word Bancho, what, what the word Bancho means. They did a good job of that with um, Manju in, the, in that one episode. It's fair. Um, all they need was one line from Marcus saying something like, Bancho, that's like an ultimate fighter. Uh, or to have Bancho Leamon mention it himself in, in his Digimon analyzer a bit. And then everything else could have stayed the same. It's pretty silly to have him talk about his supposed masses of friends, when obviously since these friends don't exist in the original, we're never going to see them. Also, yeah, he's a huge loner. That's his character. Yeah. Um, we ha- And they go on to say, the big Digivice explosion moment is not remotely nonsensical, eh, and is completely consistent with how evolution is established to work. Episode 29 confirms that the Digisoul is the power of human emotions, but seemingly the protagonists need- needed to understand this fact in order to consciously control their ultimate level emotions to achieve a proper evolution. In episode 28, their emotions are already strong enough for an ultimate level evolution, but they were out of control due to how desperate and furious everyone was. So all of it uh, achieved was a brief burst of ultimate level power before breaking the Digivices, which couldn't handle the level of raw, unrestrained Digisoul for very long. My response to that is, that all makes sense in a universe in which the Digivice was designed to a certain code level and was apparently like calibrated only to a certain point to an evolution level that no one had gone to in the first place and that it's a it's a container that can even overload because to be completely reasonable we are mixing real world technology the digivice is for all intents and purposes an iphone and we're mixing that with actual magic so while i agree that it makes sense that it could overload although i think this one where they reconstitute it again is really silly the overloading it, fine. Although keeping in mind, yeah, they had a bunch of ultimate power, but the fact that that A, went to their Digimon, and B, was blasted out in the form of a laser in the direction they wanted it to go is pretty silly. I don't know. I think that the details of that scene stand out as being unreasonable still in hindsight, but I'm willing to have a further conversation about this if you want. All right, everybody. Join us for the next episode of Black Clover, Showdown Between the Geniuses, Thomas and Nanami. Oh, genius showdown. Thomas versus Nanami. And the Sacred City's last stando. Or fiercely attack Karada's army corpse. Protect the holy city. That word is pronounced core. Gosh darn it. <laughs> you're doing my bit. Every time. Yeah, I was clearly just trying to do it to uh, reference to what you're Punch doing. Punch the clearly. army's corpse. Eh, <laughs> eh, eh. Eh. For weekly wonders this week, I'm. can I just recommend my own blog post? No. Yes, I can. Well, no, you can't. Yeah, my blog post is actually recommending different forwarding services and proxy services. You talked about that last week. Yes, but I didn't recommend it, so I'm just going to oh, say... Oh, come on! You did! So, go go read my my uh, my post on how to get and buy Japanese exclusive items, especially Digimon items. It gives tips and it gives hints and it, it tells me tells you all about these websites that I use, so please read it. It took me a lot of time and re- research, so please, I put time into this thing. Please read it. <laughs> please! <laughs> What's oh yours? god um i guess i started reading um spider woman from marvel all new all different i'm surprised yours wasn't dangarompa v3 but all right i thought i already talked about that i don't think you did because it would be v3 right but i thought I, oh maybe i talked about dangarompa 3 the anime let's let's go with this for now I'll, when i'm deeper into v3 i'll talk about it next time okay so spider, so woman. spider woman uh from marvel's all new all different it's funny it's a uh, it's got some good comedy in it basically it's big gimmick is that spider woman is pregnant so she's a superhero and also she's dealing with that. And it, it's it's got a lot of clever writing. There's a good bit, right, where um, she has a bit where she basically goes on maternity leave from being a superhero. Uh-huh. And they have a party that night. And Tony Stark arrives, as Iron Man, and he goes up to Captain Marvel, who is Spider Woman's best friend, and says, "Hey, does um does she know who? Sorry, he goes, do you know who the father is?" And she goes, "You know what? Maybe maybe you should ask her. Uh, ask you know, ask Spider Woman uh that question, right? That seems like something she should answer." So Tony goes, "All right, sure." And he walks over, 
and you just watch it from Miss Marvel's, um, Captain Marvel's perspective, and Spider Man dumps a big thing like mac and cheese on his head, <laughs> and then storms off, and then he returns over to Captain Marvel, and she goes, oh, "She didn't, she, she didn't like that, huh?" Like she's laughing, like she knew that was gonna happen. Uh, what? Did, what <laughs> um, and she finds out from Spider Woman. Oh, what did he ask? He asked if I know who the father is. <laughs> what? Because the question was, "Do you know who the father is?" <laughs> Ask that question. Oh yeah, I'll go ask her. Do you know who the father is? That's funny. <laughs> oh man. Um, so yeah, it's it's a good it's good so far. I think there might be some pre reading that maybe you want to do, but it's not necessary. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Cool. I'm reading like four books at once right now because I've just been they're all in different places, so I've been reading like a couple pages at a time and then putting them down wherever they are. Right. It's really silly. It's not a good plan. But you do the best you d- you can, and then you also got the podcast to do too. Oh boy. You can find the link dump link in the description. And this week's weekly poll is Shine Graham on Rosemont or Mirage Galgamon. You can also find our screenshot of the week and our weekly one is linked in the description and in our link dump. Our red bubble is also linked in the description and you can get more than just shirts there too and hopefully we have the new design up soon just when I'm when I'm a little less busy. You can contact us and stay updated. You can email us at lostintranslation1 at gmail.com or you can comment on this episode or message on SoundCloud. You can follow us on at Translation on Twitter and you can find us on Lost in Translation on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. We have a discussion of that on With the Will and a read through in the Digimon subreddit and we'd, we would appreciate if you were to give us a podcast review on any podcast listening device that you use. Ratings usually assist people finding the podcast so we really appreciate it and we have a website and you can vote in at the weekly poll check out our release schedule and check out our blog posts please check out our blog posts you can also donate to our Patreon, which is in the description, from as little as a dollar a month, which gets you access to Alyssa's Slack chat group, but there are high levels with more rewards such as notes, early episodes, and more. And thank you to our Patreon supporters, Sam Krieger, who has a podcast with Stevie called The Moncast, Stevie, who is also Stevie Padman on Tumblr, is currently taking commissions, with Chinglong, who you can find at twitch.tv forward slash with Chinglong, Metal Mamimon, Joe, Penguin Mage, Anime Guy, who is Anime Guy Kurosaki and the number one on YouTube, Chakmon, Ishpo Bamba, Hiro Lado, who is at Hiro Lado on Twitter, Jason Morosky, Ryuchi, who's Frost Magic on Archive of Our Own, Steven Rees, who's at Wildwing64 on Twitter, Kaidawashi, Mac, Noam, Riku, Chisai, who you can follow at Chisai236 on Tumblr, Kyle, The Lady Bugman, whose anime blog you can find at baguburagu.wordpress.com, Tom, Glitch Goat, Azrael McCool, Gene Hackmon, Matthew, Anthony, who's at Anto Classic on Twitter, Lizmet, who is Electmon on Tumblr, Sithobi, Elivorg, who is Elivorg on Tumblr, Sporky McForkenspoon, who hosts a Digimon podcast called Going Digital, Megan, Kyliak, Neobu, Jams, The Time Optimist, Silverhead Freak 25, Harvey, and Alex. You can also make a one of donation on Anno PayPal, which can be found linked in the description. It is paypal.me slash Make sure to listen to the podcast. See you guys next time. Bye! Bye-bye.